you've got a business to run, big and heavy products to ship, and customers who need them now. When you've got the right driver and the right equipment, you can bet on a spectacular result. Bennett understands complex logistics and puts the best team, the most time, and the latest technology into every customer relationship. So you can sit back, relax, and enjoy the race. Let us handle the rest. Together, Together we can move anything. Welcome to the Sebring Speed Tour. We are live in 2024 for the Cube 3 Architecture TA2 race. Evan Slater and Ben Sissel alongside me. A lot of big changes. Massive field again, Evan. Exciting new year ahead. Yeah, definitely an exciting new year. Big field, a lot of Trans Am cars. I think there's probably close to 40 of them out there. And a lot of big changes with the teams. New drivers going to new teams. So everybody's here this weekend trying to show that their program is going to be fast for this year. So it's super exciting. Some drivers have been driving all winter. Others have, haven't been in a seat and touched a race car in four months. So it's going to be interesting to see how it all works out today. And Ben, you're about to go and look at the grid, but the big news, unfortunately our champion, Cruz, isn't going to be here this weekend. He's ill. Yeah, unfortunately, Brent Cruz isn't here because he was going to race in the Cube 3 Architecture TA2 Series and in TA. So, Brent, get better, but your friend Connor Zillich is at the pole. Yeah, it doesn't get much better than that. Connor Zillich, of course, the winningest driver of 2023, and he's on the pole. Ben's going to do the grid. Me and Evan are going to go back to the booth. We'll see you in a minute. Welcome everybody in MAV TV land. We're so happy to have you here. We are live at the Sebring Speed Tour for the Cube 3 Architecture TA2 Series. We were just talking about what drivers were doing in the off season. So, uh, well, speaking of the off season, here we have Connor Zillich who just won the 24 Hours of Daytona in his LMP2 car, talking to Tony Perella, the owner of the Trans Am Series. And Tony, I mean, you're basically talking to the next Jimmy Johnson, Jeff Gordon running in your series. That's got to feel good. Honestly, I was just saying to him, it's been so fun to watch him come from nowhere to just dominate. And uh, this is not an easy field to dominate by any stroke. And then with the deal he did at the 24, unbelievable. It's like a, it's like a, almost like a proud dad to see these kids develop. But he's an all-star. But talk to him. He's the brain. Well, Connor, come over here. Tony Perella, thank you so much. So, Connor Mosak is our, here we go, our poll award winner. So I guess we're going to start a new line of these. And, um, you know, Connor Zillich, sorry, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to confuse Connor Mosak, Connor Zillich the whole time, both with Silver Hair Racing, just making it even more confusing for us. I love it. So, back at Sebring, you're at the front of the pack starting a new season. This has got to feel pretty good. Yeah, it's, uh, it's great to pick up where we left off last year. Unfortunately, at Coda, we couldn't gra grab the win at the end of the year. But, um, you know, this year is a brand new car. Um, Connor's driving, the, the other Connor is driving the car I had last year. And, um, you know, it's great to have him and Boris under the tent this season. I got a lot of high hopes for them and hoping they can have a good season and hopefully get a championship with one of them. So, um, yeah, just glad to be back with my Silver Hair crew and, um, you know, starting the weekend off well with the pole. And, um, you know, hopefully we can keep it up front and get ourselves the first win of the year and uh, my second win of the year after the Rolex 24. Nice. I love it. Connor Zillish here. Check this out. New car. I love when we start these new seasons in the Cube 3 Architecture TA2 series because everybody's coming in with some new equipment. Speaking of, Rafa Matos, two-time champion, pulls up here in his new team car with Nitro. Rafa Matos, you know, Rafa, we talk about this every year that we were so excited when Young Guns started and we started bringing in all this talent, but now as a TA2 veteran, each year we're getting thicker and thicker with talent, making it more difficult for you. But you love the challenge, don't you? I love it. You know, it's been a, a, a really good winter for us. Um, Nitro Motorsports has done a fantastic job building eight uh, TA2 cars and, and also very fast race cars. We have six cars in the top ten. And a big hats off to Chris Dyson and Concord, American Flagpole Company, believing in this program and, and making it happen. I'm really proud of uh, 
what, what, what we achieved so far starting P2 today and looking forward to climb one more step and, and be vi vi victorious in victory lane. Perfect. Thank you a lot. So uh, come over here because, ladies and gentlemen, I got to say something. Last season, we didn't have my friend Tony Garcia on the camera. Tony, wave to the crowd. Yes, Tony Garcia is back, ladies and gentlemen. I'm so excited. And then here we are, Mr. Gonzalez in the Brent Cruz car, but qualifying third. I believe your first outing with us was at Coda last year. Hopefully you're loving the Cube 3 architecture series so far. But uh, tell us about what's happening here at Sebring. Yeah, I mean, uh, we qualified third here. I uh, can't wait to get out there. You know, we started out at Coda. That was my first race, and it's just such a fun time in these TA2 cars. I couldn't wait to come back, and uh, with a lot of help through Toyota and Nitro Motorsports, we were able to get back out here, and uh, it's my home track. I'm having a lot of fun out here. It's great competition for sure, and uh, we'll see what we can do. All right, nice job. So Nitro Motorsports is two and three. Then we're back to Silver Hair here with uh, Connor Mosack. Connor Mosack, uh, it seems like you really want Sebring. You're always up there, and then something kind of unfortunately happens. Is this one that you really want? I feel good about this one, and, yeah, it's one I really want for sure. I feel like I had some bad luck, and then last year it was my mistake. that took us out, um, and then we had that long caution at the end. But I feel like we got a really good long run speed uh, car. Uh, obviously, Zilich is really fast up there, so be be tough to keep up with him, but you never know what can happen in these races. So... We'll just keep the car clean and, um, you know, hopefully be there at the end and anything can happen. Nice. I love it. Well, Connor Mosack, we're going to do well. Tony, we'll come over here. Watch out for this pylon here. But Austin Green here, we'll get you, get you over here. And Austin Green running with three-dimensional. Here, you stand there, Austin. Running with three-dimensional, but only about maybe six to eight races because three-dimensional also has now an Xfinity car for you. Yeah, it's, uh, I feel like I've been waiting for a long time uh, to get going here. Um, but, no, we have a fast uh, three-dimensional service group, Ford Mustang today, and, you know, all the guys at Peterson Racing have been working super hard over the off season. So um, I'm ready to get going. Uh, we're starting a little farther back than we like, but it's a long race. Um, so hopefully we got there. And, um, you know, and then we, we lost, uh, unfortunately, we lost our, um, our photographer, uh, Bruce Miller, a couple weeks ago after the test. So... Um, I know Doug's got a tribute scheme for him, so hopefully we can uh, go out and get a win for Bruce. Austin Green. Well, we have 38 cars in this field, so we're going to kind of walk down the field quickly because we've got Thomas Merrill here with Mike Cope Racing. Then uh, Gio Ruggiero here, a new, uh, a new driver with the series. Great to have him. I'm hearing he's huge talent. Thomas Annunziata, who was just at Daytona, finished second in the ARCA race. Unbelievable driver. He's, he's out here. He actually had a tire puncture in qualifying. Then this uh, Minn Kota Ben Mayer car here. Ben Mayer is back with us. Got the gel blaster uniform on. Then Darren Mock with the EB leadership. Last year, 2023, so look for him to really move up here in 2024. Thomas Merrill, I asked Rob Matos, but is the other big season veteran in the TA2 series. And then I know you've coached and worked with a lot of these younger drivers, but now this, this thing kind of seems to be kind of a blessing and a curse for you guys. I guess I'm a glutton for punishment that way, right? But um, it's always a pleasure to race against uh, the youngest and sharpest. So I'm um, happy to be here and, and looking forward to another great season with Cope and with HB Tuners. I love it. Well, I'll see you out there. Thomas usually has a good running here. We've got uh, Kevin Bichelle here with M1, Franklin Road Company. And look at all of this brand new livery. Adrian Lostowski. Josh Hurley. Josh Hurley has been on the podium with us in TA. We're going to see what he's doing. So, uh, Jonathan, we're going to keep going through this, but I'm going to send it back to you, Jonathan. Thanks, Ben. Yeah, a beautiful day here. Um, interesting. We've just had a, an, a situation here at uh, Sebring where we've got a little bit of water that could creep onto the front straight. So we're keeping an eye on that. Um, but uh, just in front of your picture there, there's uh, quite a lot of water down but as you can see we have a full field a little bit breezy not as bad as yesterday actually it was very strong winds yesterday gusty too and uh, that affected a lot of the drivers in qualifying but uh, it really is a fascinating sight this of course the site of the first ever 
1966 Trans Am race. And it was a race won by Jochen Rindt in a GTA Alfa Romeo. How we have changed. But we still remain true to the format of sedans because, of course, tomorrow you'll see TA2. Uh, excuse me, TA, and we'll also have those production cars from XGT, SGT, and GT. Looking high over the hairpin, the uh, Cube 3 Turn 7 hairpin, one of the best places for an overtake. And you're in for a treat today because the man sat alongside me today is Evan Slater. And, of course, Evan was fifth here last year, so knows all about racing here. Uh, how was the race here last year? great last year for me i started sixth i think on the outside row so then we made our way up to fifth it wasn't like super super crazy for racers we're kind of managing the car and uh we only had fifth for for pace wise i mean we just couldn't really i mean we could keep up with the guys in front but we didn't really have enough pace to pass them so um we were struggling with some setup stuff but it was the first first race of the year getting used to the new car getting used to the new team so i mean overall it was good finish we got good points and uh it ended up with fifth in the points position so great great start uh, there's the onboard of Tommy Sheehan in the Pro-Am uh, series this year, not, therefore not doing a full season, but racing in Pro-Am, one of our most experienced drivers, and we'll be on board with him, as we will be with Adrian Lostowski. Look at that car park packed today. All sorts of car shows, etc. as we count down the Umla Pagato countdown to green. Looking forward to what should be a great round one. And as we look high above the Sebring track, nothing really to report of in terms of drama uh, in qualifying. Did anything surprise you? I mean, the, the usual suspects, Connor Mosek, Connor Zilic, uh, and obviously Rafa Matos up where they were. Rafa won this race last year, got his season kicked off well. Um, but did anything surprise you from qualifying? No, not really. I mean, at qualifying, yeah, obviously, like you talked about, the usual suspects were up front. Connor Zilich was really impressive in qualifying, a 205-0 for our pole position lap. I mean, that's just a crazy fast lap around here in a TA2 car. So, I mean, he's a great driver with a great team, so that's really impressive. I think the order is probably normally what we would expect it to see. Thomas Annunziato in eighth, a little bit lower than he normally would be, but I heard he had a tire failure in, in qualifying. I think he had a slow leak in his tire, so that's probably why he's uh, not as high as we'd normally like to see him. But uh, it's definitely a great starting position because everybody's in where they normally would be. So it'll lead us for a, a great race because everybody's racing with people that are similar speeds that they are. Yeah, and Anunciado, of course, winner of the last race of the season at Cota last time out. So it was good to see Thomas. I'm looking for a big season from him, a sort of breakout season from him. He's been around and been very close to winning all of last year, but finally got the monkey off his back, so to speak, at Cota. And I think he's going to take that conf uh, confidence with him. Yeah, I mean, he's a great driver and he's in a great car. That Nitro Motorsports team really puts together a great car. Um, so, yeah, I'm really expecting a lot from him this season. I think he'll be, uh, he's a great driver, so he just needs to get that consistency and get those, uh, get those points and be there in the end. So we are getting ready for the start of this one and the start command coming up very soon indeed. Uh, right now, practice is on for TA. They'll be in action tomorrow. And we've got SVRA action as well as IGT. So looking forward to all of the above. Cars about to fire up here for our first race of the 2024 season. Brand new title sponsor in Cube 3 architecture this year as well. So that's good news. And of course, our broadcast partner, Mav TV, live throughout the United States on select and also highlights. But let's go now down to the pre-grid and join Ben Sissel for our star command. Well, thank you so much. I'm back here, and it's my honor to introduce our Grand Marshal, the founder of the Amelia Island Concours, one of the best shows here east of the Mississippi. Just absolutely unbelievable. I've been a few years. You raced with us in SVRA at when we were at the uh, Fernandina Beach Airport. Un I wish you were out here racing with us, but Grand Marshal, I guess that's the second best thing. Uh, I think they, they feel it's safe if I'm not out there racing, so they may be the Grand Marshal. No, it, it's a thrill to be here. You know, the first time I raced here was uh, in 1978 in a Brabham VT8, and it, it, it's hard to believe how long ago it was. I still feel as if I was as fast as I used to be, but you know what they say, the older you get, the faster you were. 
And a Brabham BT-8, that's got to be rough around these bumps. No, actually, it was pretty good. Uh, the car had a lot of compliance. It was really quick, and I learned a lot. All right, well, Bill Warner, take us away. The most famous words in motorsports. Drivers, start your engines. Here we go then, about to get those engines kicked off. I was hoping we'd get a roar from somebody, but we'll wait for a second. Adrian Lostowski, we'll be on board with him. We'll also be on board with Sheehan. And like I mentioned, uh, he's doing the Pro-Am series this year. And uh, looking forward to see what kind of pictures we get from him. He'll be right in the thick of it. Uh, and likewise, Lostowski coming your way. There is Tommy's on board. So we'll get a good view from the front of his car as he kicks off uh, down in the midfield. I'm just looking where he's down. Yeah, he starts, what, 25th? That seems like a long way, but when you see that we've got 38 entries in all, should be cracking. Just holding him a little bit. No one firing up yet because uh, they're waiting for the previous session to get off track. There's Thomas Annunziata. We've already talked about this young... 18 year old and we've got so many youngsters and the young guns uh, the man alongside me was third in the young guns a couple of years ago i believe yeah definitely it's great to see a lot of these young drivers in trans am so obviously racing everybody's aging up so the young drivers are really the next generation the real drivers that are going to be in the the next series so this is great to see them all in trans am Connor Zilic and Rafa Matos on front row. Tyler Gonzalez, one of those youngsters you just mentioned. Connor Mosak alongside him, so youth and experience, uh, but both very young. Green and Merrill, uh, former uh, champion Ruggiero and Annunciata, who we were just talking about. Adam Andretti doing both duty this time with TA and TA2. And Ben Mayer, another one of the motorsport, Nitro Motorsports men. Mark Bouchel uh, is coming in, Gavin. Bushell is coming in for the first time, a young 17-year-old. Then Hurley coming in, the eSports champion from 2020. He's alongside Lostowski. Should be a battle there. I expect Hurley to come through from row seven. Uh, DeLong and Boris said Jr. Again, two youngsters coming up on row eight. Caleb Bacon had a good season last year. And Ethan Barker, Eric Caton and Will Rogers, row 10. Big field, and it is a mixture of youth and experience. Keith Prochuk, plenty of years under his belt. Barry Bowes, moving teams this year, looking for more experience from the BC M1 race cars team. He's got uh, some good help with him alongside as well for the ASIO Data car. Doug Peterson, uh, a former champion and one of the veterans here. Ellis, uh, learning his way, but still uh, in his 30s. Sheehan Saunders, great to see support Saunders in there as well. Lee Saunders, of course, a champion of SGT. In fact, has the record of the most wins here at Sebring in Trans Am. A little further back, great to have a, a former Miami Dolphin, Gerard Odrick, just learning his way. He was here racing at Porsche just a couple of weeks ago, but this, a very different idea. And at the back, Patrick Paul and Doug Winston on row 19. And they all got penalties, three penalties at the back. And we'll find out exactly what those penalties were for. But that's your starting grid for the first race of the 2024 season. So the cars have been released and they head down the Ullman Strait. And Evan, you know, we always talk about, uh, you know, Sebring being bumpy. And, and I kind of, I kind of want to move on from that you know, kind of factor. It's, it's been bumpy since 1950. Yeah. I mean, you know, it's been bumpy a long, long time, and it's certainly been bumpy since 1966 when we were here for the first time. Uh, and everybody keeps talking about a, a repay, but everybody says it will ruin it if they do that. And even the 12-hour guys who have to, you know, pummel themselves for 12 hours around here don't want it changed. I don't want it changed. But tell me a little bit about setup here, because um, those do come in as a factor, but you've got corners like this, the sweeping sunset corner, um, that we, we see here as missing foods for this weekend. What, uh, how do you set up for a bumpy, fast track? It's hard to set up for a track like this. So obviously you need a car that's compliant over the bumps. You need the wheels to be touching the ground. So if the car's too stiff, the wheels are gonna, you're gonna hit the bump, but the car's gonna go flying in the air and it's gonna lose grip because the tires aren't touching the ground. So you need a car that's soft in the front and soft all around to kind of be able to absorb that. But also the cons are when you get a really soft race car, it likes to be really tight. Like the car doesn't really want to turn that well. So you have to find a balance. And the way you do that is with your sway bars, rebound, 
holding the front end down. So you can do a lot of ways to try and get the car dialed in. And really what's important around here is getting the car that works over the bumps so you don't lose too much time so you can still roll the speed and gain the time through the rest of the rest of the lap. And what about uh, how you play this? Uh, it's 100 miles. We often talk about the sort of variance between sprint and endurance. It's certainly not an endurance race by any means, but 100 miles is a long way. It's just over an hour. And do you, what's your mindset? Is it attack? Uh, and are you at 10 tenths the whole time, all of you at the front, as you were last year? Or uh, is it a case of, you know, thinking about the Pirellics, thinking about what's underneath you, thinking about the Sebring surface, and thinking about the opposition? There's a lot of things to think about, and a lot of it depends on what the front guys are doing. If the front guys are going to take off and they're trying to push 10 tenths the whole way through the race, that's kind of what you're forced to do. If you're in that front group and you're trying to stay there, you got to kind of do what they do. But I would say my normal mindset from going around here is attack in the beginning. In the beginning of the race, when all the cars are really bunched up close together, you need to get a good, a good start, a good drive to try and get as many places as you can, and then just be there in the end of the race so you can race for the win. Let's Sebring take a look at the track race track for the first race of the Trans Am season. This track's fun, it's fast, it's technical, and most importantly, it's bumpy. Turn one, you can see me in, uh, trying to make a move on Thomas Merrill here. This can be a good passing opportunity, but sometimes it's hard to make it stick to it being so high speed. A few technical bits here and then going into turn seven, the hairpin, Q3 corner seven. It's a big braking zone from 150 miles an hour down to 40, so it's a really great place to get a pass in because you're slowing the car down so much few technical bits here coming into turn 13 this turn is definitely very difficult it's never you never really get the car straight for the braking zone so it's hard to really time it right you can see Macho is making a great move on Merrill there through this fast flowing sector this is one of my favorites and then going into turn 17 this turn is crazy so it's super bumpy it's hard to find the right line and it's super wide you can see Zillich making a great move on wood there it's really a great passing opportunity in turn 17 because of the hard braking and the different lines you can take and that's a lap around Sebring International Raceway Almost four miles, and it's a tough one, and a great illustration. Thank you for that, uh, Evan. Uh, we've got a good insight there, and there's lots of places to overtake the hairpin being obvious. And that sunset, that last corner, the uh, Mission Food Sunset Bend, as you say, several little different lines through there, and very bumpy. So always a chance for mistakes and a chance to make up some time. But uh, here's the previous winners. Rafa Matos won it uh, several times, three times in the last few years, and his obviously favorite. Thomas Merrill, though, won it in 2021. Uh, he's out there, and he's right there in sixth position. Matos starts second. We've got youngsters in Tyler Gonzalez. I'm really looking forward to seeing what he can do. Gonzalez, another one of the youngsters coming through. He's part of the TRT program, and he's another one wanting to make a name for himself. He won the uh, GR Toyota Series last year in 86. So we are lined up down the back, Ullman Strait be on board with Los Toski and Tommy Sheerhan for sure. And the pace car will pull out of proceedings and leave these American muscle cars to do what they've been doing since 1966. And we feel it still, in the words of Portugal the man. Here we go. Q3 Architecture TA2 Series roars into action here at Sebring. Side by side at the moment, Matos and Zilic. Matos in the all-white new colours for Nitro Motorsport will try and get the jump, but the number seven silver hair is a silver fox. Nicely done by Zilic. Takes the inside line. Matos goes high and wide. It's not over yet. And a little bit of bumping and bruising here through. You can see how the bumps affect these cars as they dive into the first tight turn, three turn, and head towards the bridge for the first time, Evan. Yeah, I mean, it was a great start. Pretty clean, no contact, really. I mean, some slight bumping and banging, but that's part of racing. So, really great start. Oh, Whoa. you can see Ben Mayer off the track right there. Adrian Lostasi is going to maximize on that bad drive out of the corner from Ben Mayer, and he's going to make up that position. Yeah, good game by Lostoski, and we all were on board with that, and Ben Mayer just taking to the grass for a moment. Not the fastest route as they head down into the Q3 turn seven hairpin for the first time and head up the Fangio straight for the first time. Like you say, a good clean start. 30 laps here in the Q3 Architecture TA2. Round one from Sebring. I love the fact that it's a plain level field for everybody looking to 2024. Heaps of points up for grabs, but as Matos proved last year, getting a win, getting that thing on the board and saying that you are the winner of the first race is so psychologically important. Yeah, I mean, it's psychologically important, and it just shows that the all the other competitors, that you're here and you're here to do well. So, I mean, it's kind of like 
racing, I say, is always 95% a mental game. Obviously, you need to be physically strong enough to like drive the car, but you need to be in the in the right mindset, and that helps you. Getting that first win helps you get in a better mindset, and it just shows to the other competitors that you're here to you're here to win. A first look at Tommy Sheehan on board in the Pro Am class, and we'll be watching his data. If you stay and look at the uh, data on the bottom there, you can see where he's braking and where the throttle is. You can also see the miles per hour and RPM he's dealing with. So for the wannabe racers out there, you've got a good insight as to how they come down the Almond Straight. And I was clocking them yesterday, and there's some very big top speeds coming through there. It's a long, long straight, the Almond Straight. It kind of belies just how long it is from the camera angle. Uh, as Annunciata dives through ahead of Merrill, a former winner here, bouncing over the curbs at sunset. But it's a good lead at the moment for Connor Zilic. Zilic looking very good so far. Matos second, Gonzalez third, Austin Green fourth in the all-yellow three-dimensional services. Annunciata under pressure from Merrill. Merrill is one of those guys that likes to attack early, but it's, uh, it's hurt him in the past too. Yeah, I mean, so Merrill's, his whole, like, racing strategy is really be there strong in the beginning. He's got a fast car in the beginning, and he's really pushing the car. But he's also using a lot of the tires. So right here on Annunziata, he's really trying to get by, because in these beginning stages of the races, he likes to do well and go fast. Sometimes that can't hurt him in the end of the race. If we stay green for a long period of time, we're racing for 15 laps without a full-course caution, that can cause his tires to kind of get overheated, and that could potentially hurt him in the end of the race. Merrill's trying to be super aggressive, get by Annunziata, make the time up while he still has good tires, and then hope for a full-course yellow to kind of bring the tires back down to temperature. And, uh, yeah. Yeah, I'm also looking closely at Adam Andretti. Good to see him back in TA2 uh, for the ultimate headers race at Chevrolet. Uh, just behind Merrill, in fact, and then Gio Gerio in eighth position. Lostowski ninth. We're on board with him now as he... Heads up the back part of the circuit to the top of Fangio and heading down towards Collier and Tower Turn 30. There is an overtake, as you saw in your track map, into this right-hander, but it's, uh, it's, it's, uh, sometimes you can lock up, as we just saw somebody doing just then. Yeah, it's really easy to lock up, because like I touched on in the track track like walkthrough, it's not a straight braking zone. So these cars, they don't have ABS. They don't have any really nannies at all. So when you're braking in a straight line, it's pretty easy to not lock up a tire. But as soon as you start to dip in with that steering wheel, turn it in, it's really easy to lock that inside front because the weight starts to shift to the outside. So it gets kind of unloaded, so it's really easy to lock up. So that's something you got to be careful with there. And then when you're making a pass, you got to be careful because if you lock up when you're in on the inside trying to make that, that pass, you can really easily just slide out into the other guy and uh, have contact. And how hard can you hurt the Pirellis over 100 miles if you start making lockups like that? I mean, eventually they're going to wear, obviously, but uh, are they pretty hardy? Yeah, so these Pirelli tires, they're great tires. So if you have, like, one lockup in the whole race, you're not, you're not yeah. going to have a problem at all. But the thing about a lockup is it, it flat spots the tires. So the tires are obviously round, but when you have it locked up and you're sliding across the pavement, it wears that one spot really aggressively, so it, gets, it actually gets flat. So you get a really bad vibration. And then the problem is once you do that, once you flat spot these tires, any racing tire, it's really hard because whenever you hit the brakes, it's going to want to find that spot and just lock up again. So if you have a lock up with one of these early tires, you got to make sure to not lock it up again. So then you can actually have that flat spot kind of round out over time. These tires are great. So with these cars and these 100 miles, ooh, great move by, uh, what is that? I don't know what car that is, but great move by him. Um, so with these tires, you can kind of drive them really hard through the whole race. You just got to be careful with the rear tires. These cars have so much horsepower that you can just get wheel spin really easily. That'll end up overheating the rear tires, and then you'll really be chasing that towards the end of the uh, session. I think that was uh, Roberto Sabato just getting through on Tommy Sheehan, and he's dropped down uh, a long way. In fact, he's down in 21st place. Also saw a shot of the uh, 16, I think 17-year-old Gio Ruggiero for Nitro Motorsports from Seekonk, uh, Massachusetts, another TID, uh, TRD, uh, Toyota-supported uh, driver, and he was the 2022 Show Me The Money late Pro Late Model Series champion. So we've got guys coming from um, all sorts of different angles. He drove for Venturini uh, Motorsports, uh, and uh, this is his first Trans Am race, so we'll keep an eye on the number 40, who's currently in 8th position. We go back on board with Lostowski. Lostowski in ninth, just behind the man I was talking about. Yeah, I'm just watching that car from the inboard. You can see in the, the lower right, you can see his hands. So yeah. he doesn't seem to be fighting the car that much. So that means he's got a race car he's pretty happy with. The car doesn't seem like it's really tight. It doesn't seem like it's pushing anywhere. And the rear end doesn't seem like it's sliding around too much. So it seems like Adrian Lostowski is a really great race car that he's happy with right now. 
Yep, the uh, CMI spot on Sir Ford Mustang going good. And through goes the 83, but things stepping down now as top six is still Zilic, Matos, Gonzalez, Green, Merrill. Green, of course, our young gun winner last year and uh, our top rookie, excuse me, I should say, uh, in fourth position. Merrill fifth, Annunziata sixth, and Reddy's up to seventh now. And uh, Gio Ruggiari in eighth, then Lostowski ninth. And Darren Mock, first time we've met him, in tenth position. He too looking for a big season, the youngster. And all of those youngsters I mentioned, and they range between, what, 16 and 24, but they're all going for the Young Guns title. 20,000 up for grabs, you were up in that uh, battle, and uh, I love to see all you youngsters fighting each other, even though you're not necessarily in the same position next to each other. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's definitely interesting, because it's like you're fighting for this other championship, but you're also still fighting for the main national championship. So when I was out there, obviously I'd r rather be out there right now because the commentary for no offense, but when I was out there, <laughs> it's... Um, None taken. It's interesting because you don't really focus on the other championships. You don't really think about the championship too much. You just think about trying to get the points for this race. You Obviously, this is the first race of the season, so you can't control what's happening 10 races in. Um, so right here in, these, in this state, they're just trying to focus on finishing this race, getting as much points as they can, and they'll start worrying about that $20,000 Young Gun Scholarship and the national championship towards the last few races when it really is really up for grabs. Start of the season and a clean start it is. Four laps into the 30 here. TA2 brought to you uh, by Cube 3 Architecture, our brand new title sponsor. Great to have them on board and so far it's been a clean set of heels to start us off. Zillage uh, winning his driver last year with what, four poles and five wins is out doing what he does best. He's already been a winner. I think the youngest ever winner at uh, Daytona a few weeks ago. Yeah, I mean that was really impressive. He, uh, I was at that Daytona 24 race and his team was just, they were great the whole time. He was really confident in that race car and he was fast so they put together a great team. They had great pit stops, great strategies and uh, they, they came out to win so that was great for them connor zill it's just in this race it's not in the 24 in this race he just clocked the fastest lap of the session and a 207 one so he's been consistently half a second to a second a lap faster than rafa matos in the lead and he's just building that lead to now eight point or 3.8 seconds so he's doing a great job yeah no question the one man that uh, has surprised me is connor mosak he's gone a little backwards he's down in what 14th position at the moment uh, uh, in um, the number 77, the, the Camaro. Uh, yeah, that's really surprising for him. I mean, he's a great driver. I think he was, I don't want to get this wrong because I don't know too much, but I think he was either an Xfinity or a truck driver last year in yep, NASCAR. Yep, yep. Um, so he's been really fast I think fast he did both, to be honest, but mainly Xfinity. Yeah. Okay, yeah, yeah. So he's been really fast. He's been a great driver. So, But he's struggling right now in 14th position, started fourth. Um, so it's interesting to see that. I wonder if he's having a mechanical issue. Maybe he's having something wrong with the setup that he's not happy with. You can see his car, this gray and orange one right there on our screen. So I don't really know what's going wrong. It's obviously not a, a, a terminal issue because he's still out there going, but it might be slowing him down just a little bit. And there's Barry Bowes, of course, swapping teams this season, and he's our pro-am leader at the moment. Uh, of course, battles within battles in each and every one. I mentioned the young guns. We've also got the pro-am guys out there. Uh, they're not doing a full season, but they are fighting against each other for the pro-am honors. Uh, Tommy Sheehan also involved in that, as is Lee Saunders, new to the... Now, and this is not good for Tommy Sheehan uh, oh, no. coming in, and obviously with the uh, bonnet off, and it looks as though something's... I don't know. No, not smoking. I wouldn't say that. Something else in as well. One of the VC cars, but uh, Tommy Sheehan parked up, and of course, no pit stops expected uh, in these 100 mile races, but something wrong with Tommy's car. Yeah, I mean, it's hard because you obviously have the winter to rebuild your car and try and build the best car you can, but sometimes when you take the whole thing apart and put it back together, there's some little gremlins that you might not see. So when you're building a new car or fixing up your old one, just rebuilding it, there's little things that might go wrong, and it seems like one of those might have happened to Tommy Sheehan. So here's your race leader completing another lap and he's been averaging in the 207s throughout most of this race and uh, just extending that lead. He's got a gap of some 4.3 seconds over Rafa Matos in second place and I think it's going to take a caution perhaps to really change the complexion of this race. But there's a long way to go yet and we all know in Trans Am, six of the 30 gone. Yeah, just looking at that number seven silver hair racing car, that car looks dialed in. I mean, it doesn't seem like he's sliding in the rear. It doesn't seem like the car's like not wanting to turn. It just seems like the thing is hooked up and just glued to the racetrack. So I think he's just having a breeze of a time driving that car. 
because um, it seems like it's so dialed in. Like you can see right here, he's not having to, if you're looking at the front wheels, you can see he's not really having to fight it. And on the exit there, he's not having any big slides. It's just he's putting the power down smooth, and uh, that's where he's really gaining all his time. I think what was so impressive about Zilic uh, last year was he had to make several dashes from the back of the grid, and even at street races, was able to do that, make passes and make moves and use what he had underneath him. Uh, whether it be from a qualifying situation or a penalty that he was given. But he was able to just really make his way through, and that's what impressed me last year. And he really is becoming uh, the ultimate man. And, of course, winning at Detroit in front of Chevrolet was no harm, no foul for no. him. <laughs> oh, no, Doug Peterson. Doug also Peterson in also in, and he's got that special livery um, this weekend. And uh, you'll see it there. You can see not the usual yellow three-dimensional colors. And he is uh, making a memory of... Barry Moore, who passed away recently, and so therefore, and of course, he's a former military man, so he is paying homage to him, but sadly, not where he wants to be, the former champion. Running Austin Green only, they've uh, shrunk down the team as three-dimensional, uh, and maybe that's a, a feeling that Doug just wants to concentrate on the youngster, Austin Green, who also is doing uh, some Xfinity work too, and he's going to be representing Doug Peterson. So I think Doug kind of spreading out in one way and then slimming down his Trans Am uh, action the other way, but still enjoying it, I'm sure. Now you see the gap between first, second, and third as they cross the strip. And in fourth place is the teammate to Peterson. That is Austin Green in the more traditional three-dimensional services colors. Austin Green currently in the 89 in fourth position. Merrill behind him in fifth and Unciata in sixth. Andretti has moved up to seventh. Gerio in eighth. Lostowski ninth. And Darren Mock is in tenth position. Rafa Matos just did, just did the fastest lap of the session. Um, so he's definitely closing that gap a little bit to Connor Zillich. Good point, Rafa Matos doing the quickest lap, and Evan, you picked up on that nicely uh, because we need Rafa, Rafa to, he's just gone into, he's just dipped into the 2069, so he's obviously not wanting to lose any more pace on Connor Zilic because the gap has gone quite high up. He's got a decent gap. Uh, it's nice to see him in these new colors, these red, white, and blue colors uh, for Nitro Motorsports, and uh, I guess the reason he's there is that he just wants to keep uh, swapping it up and wants to keep uh, helping. He's also got a, a scholarship uh, as well, a uh, Pirella scholarship for helping uh, the youngsters in, uh, or going to help the youngsters in Nitro Motorsports, and that's going to be great for any youngster, isn't it? Yeah, for sure. I mean, Rafa Mato is obviously so much experience, so he can be a great mentor. He knows so much. He's raised, I think he was an Indy Lights champion. Oh, Doug Peterson out of the car, so that must be a terminal issue. Yeah. But um, Rafa Mato, who raced for Doug Peterson last year, actually, he's done a lot of stuff. I mean, he's an Indy Lights, rookie, or Indy Lights champion, Indy Car Rookie of the Year, so he has a lot of experience, Rafa Matos does, so he can really be help, he can help those young drivers in Nitro Motorsports. Well, as you can see, Doug talking to the team, and they'll get things back together and get ready for Atlanta and Nola to come. But uh, something went wrong there for the three-dimensional services team, one of the most successful teams we've had in the last few years. We're keeping an eye on this man, Rafa Matos, got his new sponsorship, Concord uh, Flagpole, uh, this year. Uh, and then, of course, the number 70, Tyler Gonzalez, just 17 years of age, a Toyota champion last year in the GR Cup. And did do one race, did Tyler, at Cota. Uh, last year, so we've, we've seen him in a TA2 car, but this is his first real run, and uh, we'll be watching for big things from him, uh, just 19 years of age. Yeah, so we saw him run at Coda, I believe, I don't remember how he did, but he normally was going to drive the number 30 Nitro car for this this um, this race, but Frank Cruz obviously is out with illness, so he, um, so Tyler Gonzalez is driving Brent Cruz's car. And there's a full course yellow. Yeah. So that's going to bunch the field up. That's really what Rafa Matos has been hoping for because that bunches him up to Connor Zilich and gives him a uh, an opportunity to have a shot at him. Yeah, I'm going to say, I don't know if this is bad or good for Tommy Sheehan because he was just coming out of the pits. We were on board with him as he dives into turn three, but now under caution. So our first full race caution. We'll find out what's happened in a moment. Uh, but that slows everything down. And it certainly plays into the hands of Rafa Matos, who's making some inroads on Connor Zillage, who by now had taken a, well, he got to over five seconds at one point, and the gap of four seconds has now come down. So here is that uh, Ginetta safety car. Great to see it. Used to be a GT champion a couple of years ago, the Ginetta. Yeah, those Ginettas are cool cars. So obviously, it's great to have one as a, uh, a safety car here for this event. And uh, I've heard they're great 
cars for obviously the safety car, but also great cars to drive around the racetrack yep. themselves. Made in England, of course, one of the smallest factories in motor, in motor racing and in car making, and uh, been very successful. Certainly punched above its weight over the years. It's you interesting see. that we have a full course uh, caution. They haven't showed what it is, so I wonder if there's maybe some debris or oil on the track. Really, no idea because we haven't seen anything so far yeah that puddle i mentioned right at the top it was right in front of me which is why i mentioned it but i think some uh, water hose or something uh, had broken and uh, they've done a good job have uh, the uh, officials here to clear things up but uh, there was definitely uh, one of the drains has got pump punctured or something but either way it's silich batos and gonzalez your top three green maryland and seattle the top six and ready in seventh Ruggiero in eighth position, Lostowski holding on ninth, and Mock rounds out the top ten. Josh Hurley, we haven't mentioned him. Uh, he was our eSports champion back in 2020 and does a lot of driver coaching and uh, is a very good driver. Started off in TDI and uh, has been around for a while. And he's always quick. In fact, he's only done two Trans Am races, and both of them have ended up in podiums. So not bad. Down the Almond straight then, all quiet on the western front, so to speak, and Zilic has a little bit of time to contemplate. Likewise does this man, Lostowski. And you see him look, just putting his foot on the brake while he's accelerating here uh, at over 100 miles an hour, and that's just to keep temperature, right? No, so I actually I looked at that while he was driving. I think his brake sensor's bad okay. because he was... Um he was going full speed on the racetrack and down the straightaway, on. and it was still <laughs> on the brake. So I'm like, I think the sensor's probably bad. And that, yeah, I, mean, I was say, the amount of time it's on now, there's no way. Yeah, there's, <laughs> there's so many so many sensors and so many things in these cars. Although they don't have, like, ABS or traction control, you still have sensors to sense how hard you're pushing the brakes, which obviously is useful for the data, looking on after the fact, and the live video. But um, I think just one of those sensors probably failed. It doesn't affect the car performance in any way, and the brakes are not dragging. So we're down... On the caution for the first time, the first time in the year, this is the first round of the Q3 Architecture TA2 season. And like I said, a huge field of some 39 entries at the birthplace of where Trans Am began back in 1966, some 58 years ago. Pretty impressive when you think about it. The longest running road race championship in the USA. And long may it continue. It's having a real renaissance at the moment with young talent coming through, trying to get experience to make it to the next level of motor racing, whether that be SRO or IMSA, or of course NASCAR, a lot of these youngsters looking for road course experience. As we look at the number 81 going through shot, that's Jared Odrick. Welcome him, it's great to have an ex-NFL footballer on board. He gets better all the time and uh, not a, not a youngster, he's been around, he's retired from uh, football in fact. But while we wait for the resumption, let's head down to Ben in the pit lane. Well thank you Jonathan and Evan, check this out. So Doug Peterson is out with a mechanical. He just went back to the paddock. You could tell he was frustrated because he is racing in memory of our good friend and Trans Am family member, Bruce B. Miller. And if you don't mind, I'm gonna kind of indulge it a little bit because as a track photographer, videographer, and Bruce being the first one at events, we hung out quite a bit. And I always felt like he had my back when we were out there shooting photos behind the wall of the racetrack. A Vietnam Army veteran. I think about him every time I drive to the tracks because he gave me one of his pins that I put up in the ceiling of my truck. So to the Peterson family, to the Bruce Miller family, my condolences go out. We've lost a great member of the Trans Am family. Doug Peterson, so sorry to go out with a mechanical in Bruce's honor. But then, uh, Tony, if I can get you to come down the next pit box down is silver hair so hopefully we're going to be able to talk to gill with silver hair because they've really been working in the off season trying to dial in these three silver hair cars and uh connor zillish connor mosak look really fast so where uh where is is gill over here yeah hey jeff can you get Gil to come down here? So we're going to talk to, to Gil because, man, this car is really hooked up. Silver Hair Racing doing really well. So, Gil, you guys have found something in the off season. What's going on out there? I think we've got the same thing we had last year. I mean, the guy behind the seat's just an amazing talent. 
But uh, all these guys on the Silver Hair Chevrolets, are, they're just doing a great job. I mean, we just got to get uh, Connor Mozak. Uh, we had a little bit loose on him in the beginning, but I think we're going to get better. Nice. So what is Con actually the two Connors? What are they saying on the radio? Are they pretty calm? And when the race is going this way, or do you try to stay off of the radio? Well, I mean, obviously with Connor Zillich in the lead right there, he had a pretty good lead. We're trying to get him just to conserve because this place is hard on tires. So uh, we keep trying to get him to slow down, but it's the same old deal. The more you slow down, the faster he goes. But uh, as soon as we can get Mozak and Boris out of traffic, I think they're going to be a lot better too. So, Gil, longtime uh, chief with Hendricks Motorsports in NASCAR, looking out really good for him as the cars come down. So, Jonathan, I'm going to send it back to you. Thanks, man. Yep, as you can see, the car's coming down. The main straight still under caution. Jonathan Green and Evan Slater, who took fifth place in this race last year. And you are going to do some racing, but we want you back in TA2, don't we? Yeah, I mean, I love the Trans Am season, but I didn't, I didn't really find an opportunity for Trans Am for me this year. Um, but I'm really excited to be racing in Radical Cup, I guess. I oh, that's just, cool. I kind of just officially announced that now. But, um, yeah, so I'm really excited. going to be here next week doing that, and uh, we're going for the championship. Oh, that's convenient. That. <laughs> yeah, we're going to be going for the championship in that series. So I'm really excited. But also, I really do want to get back into one of these Trans Am cars. So obviously not going to be going... Uh, for a championship in this series due to schedule conflicts, but I really do want to get into one of these cars again at some How point. How old are you really. now? I'm 18. Yeah, perfect age, and uh, he's already been third place in our Young Guns championship and also chasing the rookies title uh, back when uh, he was a regular uh, in the top five and top ten uh, when he was in a TA2 car. So if you uh, want to want to put your money behind somebody who's up and coming in the motor racing world, Evan Slater is your man. We're under caution. And I say that because uh, we've got so many youngsters out there as well. It's not just Evan. We obviously want him to get away, but uh, there's so many guys. We just mentioned a few. Uh, we welcome in Gavin Bushell uh, this weekend, just 16. Caleb Bacon made a name for himself, 19 years old. Connor Zilich is leading the race. He's 17, and he's just signed with Trackhouse uh, in... Uh, here in the USA, he'll be doing quite a lot of work with them and working with the likes of Shane Van Gisbergen and Ethan Barker, another 18-year-old. Um, so Parker DeLong, you know, these guys coming through, it's great to have so many youngsters like yourselves. And, of course, don't forget that Young Guns Championship worth 20000 to the winner. And uh, Brent Cruz is our current champion at just 15, and I think he really is. Uh, with Connor, they grew up racing carts together at, at the world level and, of course, back back at home here, uh, here in the USA. But uh, they've been the poster boys, the poster child, as, as it were, of the new era of Trans Am. And long may it continue. I, I hope more youngsters are encouraged to take on these big monsters. Yeah, for sure. I mean, the more the more young guns you see in this series, the more young guns want to come to this series. So it's great because the more there are, it just shows that this is the place to be and this shows that this can be a great pathway. Um, and it can be a great destination for racing um, if you're trying to make a name for yourself. Yeah, and it's a good friendly paddock too. You get like uh, the likes of Rafa Matos are quite happy to share their information, share their wisdom, uh, having you know having competed for some 20, 20 years or so. Uh, same with the Adam Andretti. Uh, you know, you really do get a chance. And I don't know. You tell me. I'm not a driver, but uh, do you get the advice from these older guys? Yeah, I mean, it's kind of, it's interesting, because you want to ask them for advice, but you also don't. Like, you don't want to, there's some things they just won't share. So, like, if they're doing anything confidential, or are there any, like, speed, speed secrets that they really think are secret, they're not going to tell you. But, I mean, if you have any advice on, like, your your racing pathway, or, like, just advice on about the basic things of driving these cars, they'll totally be super open to share. And, I mean, and that's a great thing. You don't want to have everybody, like, mad at each other, and the driver's not, not talking with each other. But in this great series, you can see, like, on the grid, when all the drivers aren't getting in their car yet, they're all chatting, they're all having a good conversation. So it's great to see everybody being kind of, like a, it's more of a, a family than just, just a racing series. Lights are out on the pace car, so that means we're going green this time, I believe. We are going green in a moment's time. So the pace car coming off, it was a fire with one of the cars, that was the problem. And as we are live on MAV TV and on the Sebring Speed Tour, we go to green again, and Connor Zilich is away and leads this pack. Rafa Matos has got an enormous opportunity right now. Gonzalez looking for a way through. Here comes on the outside, Austin Green in the all yellow. Annunziata jinks to the outside. Everybody looking for position. Likewise, Merrill, Annunziata, Andretti, all trying to make up a spot. 
here at the restart. As we go back on board with Lostowski, as he makes his move on the number 40. Nice move indeed on Ruggiero and does make it through at turn three nicely done. Yeah, I mean, that was a great move. Super, super, just like textbook, just outbreaking the guy on the inside and then just forcing him out. So then that's your line at that point. So great move, textbook move. And uh, now he's just looking forward to the next guy. Staying on board with Los Tosk as he tries to make his way through. Uh, no real change at the front. Merrill made a nice move, but he's still in fifth at the moment. As we see the man in front of him, that is the number 70 of Tyler Gonzalez. And what a way to make a name for yourself. Like we said, Tyler joined us at the end of last year just for a one-off. But now he's in the thick of it, the young stuck. And uh, still there in third place and holding his own, as we've seen so many times. And up against the likes of Matos and Merrill, who, of course, have gone head-to-head -head for their own title just a, a year or so ago, or two years. In fact, there's an Anciata, got his first win last time out of Kota. Yeah, Adam Andretti, so the past few seasons when he's been driving a TA2 car, he's been driving a, an older, outdated TA2 yeah. car. I think the chassis was built in, like, 2013 or something, and an old motor. So this year, he finally got a brand-new How car. And uh, I was talking about it, and he's really happy about it. The car is feeling great. He's actually able to make the setup changes he wants. He's able to get the car to drive the way he really, really desires. So I'm super happy for him with that, with that new car that he's really comfortable with. Yeah, and back with Ultimate Headers as well, and of course in the same paddock or stable with uh, Wally Dolan back, and he'll also be doing TA, and he's he's also racing for Burton Racing in that TA, and it too a brand new car. So Adam absolutely skipping around the paddock at the moment and now he's making inroads because here comes the 41 adam andretti all over austin green and Enciata though right behind him and it's close there for this battle for the top six zilich completes the lap and is gapped once again the man in second place rafa matos 12 of the 27 laps gone the first round of the q3 architecture ta2 series and Enciata right there with andretti as they dive through one where's the obvious place is it the hairpin yeah, so obviously for passing, into this turn, turn three is a great place to make a move because it's just a hard braking zone. Into turn seven, you can make a move. That's just a classic big braking zone. You just have to brake later than the next guy. Turn 10, same thing. Really smooth, great braking zone to just outbreak the guy. Um, turn 13, like we saw in the uh, a little bit earlier, you can make a move there. It's slightly harder to make a stick, but you certainly can. And then into Sunset Bend, turn 17, you can make a move. Um, just by outbreaking the guy as well. Well, then Ciara looks to the inside, and is he going to make the move with the hairpin? Yes, he does. And at the Q3, turn seven hairpin. Through goes Annunciata, but Andretti comes back at him. Side by side, oh. the youngster Andretti's gone wide. Has he gone off? That would be bad news for him, as Lostowski's also trying to do the same here on Annunciata. That was close racing. You can see Annunciata made a great move into the Q3 architecture turn seven, but then on the exit, uh, Andretti did not give it up. He just stayed there, and they were kind of dooring each other the way by, and then going into that little kink of turn eight, um, they were side by side, and I think it, uh, Andretti ended up off the track a little bit and lost a few positions. Yeah, I'm going to see where he checks back in, because I don't think he actually went off off. I think he went off and wide and then managed to rejoin. We'll soon find out, though, when they cross the line again then. But it's all drama here at the restart. Lostowski's gained the most, but that little battle between Annunciata and Andretti has led Andretti to go off track as they come out of 15, 16 complex into the Almond Strait and down that Almond Strait they go. Zilic leading the way, dives into that last corner. And Austin now, Austin Green that is, in the all yellow three dimensional services has managed to get a decent gap because of the shenanigans going on behind him. And that will give him pause for thought because he's got a little bit of breathing room now. Yeah, Andretti's dropped right down and he may be out to be honest. We'll soon find out. Lenciata doesn't have any damage though, but it was a good little fight. Uh, I don't know, you know, whether you call that foul play or not, but uh, either way, Lenciata's on his way still got this man, Lostowski, behind him. Yeah, I mean, that's a hard... So, obviously, into the Q3 turn 7, you can make the great move under the braking, but if the outside driver, the over the driver getting overtake, overtaken, doesn't want to give it up, like, if they want to stay there, it can be really hard, because there's a bunch of, like, turns 8 and 9, you don't really think about them, but they're little, like, bends. They're normally easily flat out. You can see them coming up if we stay on board with Lostowski. Like, right here, there's some little, like, jinx. 
So if you're side by side and you're not given room, that can be really difficult to navigate through there when you're both trying to pass each other or not let the other one pass. Um, Mandretti did come across the line in 22nd place. He's behind Ethan Barker now and just ahead of Chris Durbin. So a bag, load of work for Adam Mandretti to do, having been up into the top seven uh, and top six at one point. Lostowski, though, still chasing the Nuncio. When I was looking on the onboard with Adrian Lostowski, I saw some big skid marks in that exact place where they had contact. I saw some big skid marks pointing to the outside, so I wonder if he kind of had a little spin because of the contact. I don't really know. It was hard to tell without the camera angle, but it did look like his car did not stay in a straight line. Um, through that move. So I don't know if that'll be a penalty for Nunziata. I really doubt it. I think that's kind of a racing incident. They were both side by side racing hard. Um, it's just really unfortunate for Adam and Jay. I'm not a race director, but that's how I see it. I see it as a racing incident. And we welcome our viewers on Map TV live here for the Q3 TA2 championship for 2024 from Sebring, the home of where it all began for Trans Am back in 1966. Jochen Rint, you might have heard the name, became a great Formula One driver. He won the first ever race, a race that H.J. Foyt was in and Paddy Hopker in a mini, no less, all the way back in 66. Both those two drivers didn't finish, but Jochen Rint in an Alfa Romeo did, and he started a tradition that we see here all the way in 2024. Great to see it continuing. Now, of course, with the tube frame and the very NASCAR-esque looking cars, as we take a look at Josh Hurley, one of the BC cars, the familiar colors of the BC racing colors, but great to see Josh Hurley finally behind the wheel. Like I said, he doesn't do a lot of Trans Am, but uh, got to know him when in 2020, during the pandemic, we did an entire uh, E-series. I'd love to see that come back. And uh, it was fascinating to be part of. First time I've ever done anything like sim racing, but more importantly to commentate on it for me was wild because they were actual drivers in their homes during the pandemic. Yeah, those those racing series are so exciting. They're so much fun. And I think it would be kind of cool to do one nowadays, even though we're not in the pandemic and we can actually drive these real sure. race cars. But it'd be cool to have like a series before the race weekend because all these drivers are on their simulators at home preparing for these races. So it'd be cool to have an actual like event, a series where you're racing on the track that you're going to race in the Trans Am car maybe the week after. So that would be kind of cool. Brochuk getting the signal from Tommy Sheehan. You were on board when he saw it just to go, hey, I see you. You're right behind me. You want to make the move? Go for it, buddy. And Brochuk goes through in the number nine. Yeah, Tommy Sheehan's a lap down. He had the pit from the mechanical issue. Maybe he's a few laps down. So he just didn't want to interrupt Pete Brochuk's race and just let him, let him go by so that he can get the clean air and he can uh, let his car cool down and just kind of drive and what are your expectations? You've obviously looked at the field. That you've driven against most of them. Uh, there's a few new names that you may not have raced against, but uh, who do you see as the obvious favorite uh, if we take Cruz out of the equation for a second? Um, for this race or for the championship? Uh, both. So, I mean, I think Connor Zillich this weekend and last, the end of last year, he's been really unstoppable. Um, so for this race, I think Connor Zillich yeah. is going to be really, really effective. I mean, so far the race has been in his hands. I mean, he just set the fastest lap at 2.06.7, which is, like, insanely fast. Um, so I think this race, he's kind of in control. But he's busy doing, I don't know, actually, I don't know what com what's confidential with what he's doing. But um, I don't know what's announced yet. But he's doing some really cool things, some cool races, some cool series. Um, so he's going to be busy. So he's only going to be able to do three Trans Am races, I believe. So he's definitely not going to be a championship contender. But I think a championship, a real championship contender, will be Rafa Matos. I think he has the experience. He's fast. He's in a great car, great team. So I think Rafa Matos is really going to be fighting for the championship this year. And, I mean, unfortunately, I don't think Brent Cruz is going to be in it because he missed the first race. So he missed out on these crucial points. Um, so right now, it looking like for this race, I think Connor Zillich is in the best place for the championship so far. I think Rafa Matos. Yeah, and Rafa Matos, of course, going for the record number of wins in Trans Am, and uh, he's equal at the moment, and he could get it. He could win that today if he's lucky. Uh, he's sat there in second place as we're on board with Thomas Sheehan into turn three. And like I say, a lap down at the moment for the Pro Am driver. And there is Rafa Matos in the all red, white, and blue Concord American flagpole sponsored car. Racing for Nitro Motorsport. A big change for him, but I think he's relishing the opportunity to work with new folk and also perhaps work with some of the youngsters and help them along their way. 
just watching that car, that car looks that look car looks really good through the corner. I mean, in turn 13 where we were just watching, Rafa was maximizing all the tracks. So that was great driving from his half. But um, the car was really wasn't sliding, wasn't really looking any feisty. It was just looking nice and smooth and great. An interesting way to see with these cars, an interesting thing to look at, is right on the front bumper on the bottom is the front splitter. So that's kind of what makes the front downforce for these cars. So you can watch it right there, the one that's super close to the front, uh, super close to the ground. And that just gets all the air to start coming over the car and get front downforce. So it's really interesting to watch the different ride heights of that front splitter. And then when you're getting it on the brakes, getting the nose of the car down to the ground, how close and how smooth that splitter can be. Um, in the braking zone. Like right there, you can see it was pretty smooth on the way in. This race is getting to the halfway point now, and Matos just biding his time. There are both the leaders are in the 206s, the high 206s. Uh, last time out at 207.5, in fact, actually, both of them dropping off. Uh, Zilich to 205, uh, 207.5.49. But that's still very fast around here for sure in a TA2 car. No question about it. And I'm keeping an eye on Andretti. He's got up to 18, so he's made some time up from that incident he had. Um, but he's really going to be working in that Chevrolet uh, Ultimate Headers car. DeLong uh, also trying to make his way up. And the top six is Zilic, Matos, Gonzalez, Merrill. Green drops to fifth. And Annunziata still in sixth place with Lostowski chasing him. Looking at Josh Hurley there for a moment in the 20. The BCR Greenlight Simulation Ford Mustang. And Greenlight Simulation is the company that Josh runs. Does a lot of simulation work. This is no surprise, therefore, he was our sim or e-sport champion back in the day. The 54 Optima Batteries car just pulled into the pit lane. I just saw that out our window from the commentary booth, so he must have some mechanical issue. I'm kind of looking to see see what those mechanics are doing. They're kind of checking out the left front. We've had three cars come into the pits. Yeah, that's Bruce all Raymond. Three, all three have been looking at something in the left front of the car, so I don't really know what that is. And maybe they're cutting down tires. I don't think so. But maybe they're having suspension issues. It's really interesting because all three of the people that have been in the pits yeah, have been related point, to yeah. that corner of the car. Nice spot. I mean, yeah, that's Bruce Raymond we're looking at uh, in the optimal batteries car. And as you say, they're just physically looking. It's not specific, is it? They're not quite sure what, what the deal is. Um, but anyway, Bruce Raymond is losing time. That fender's also a little bit, you can see the fender, the fiberglass is cracked a little bit. Yeah. So I wonder if he had contact, maybe knocked the toe, knocked the alignment out, broke a suspension component. Really have no idea. Oh, they're putting a new tire on, so must have cut one down. Which continues with Bruce Raymond stuck in the pit, something wrong with the left front, but uh, they're changing the tires and uh, maybe it is just that. Uh, they were looking quite quizzically at the bodywork and underneath the brake ducts uh, and the brake pads, but uh, they've just changed the tyre. Now they're looking at the front right. This is Bruce Raymond, the Optima Batteries car, number 54, and uh, stuck stationary, and this has got to be painful, no question about it. If you've just joined us, the drama we've had has been a battle at the front between Zilic, Matos, and Gonzalez, the top three, and they have held station, although Gonzalez has done his quickest lap at 206.9. That's been the battle at the front. It was a coming together with Annunziata and Andretti. Andretti losing out uh, and dropping back to 22nd. He's up to 18th again uh, and is now behind the new boy, Gavin Michelle, uh, North Carolina. Uh, we're on board with Lostowski. Coming into the hairpin. And oh, oh off goes the Jared Odrick. That's yeah, Odrick, the uh, NFL, NFL player. player. Yeah. That looks like, I don't know, it's hard to tell from that, but it looks like the exit of turn one. Um, grass so i don't really know what could happen maybe he lost another braking spun out and there's a lot of runoff so you can obviously you can have you can slide out to the outside there without really hitting anything but maybe he just got beached there or the car stalled so it's a weird spot a weird place to be stopped so i don't really know what must have happened with that car yeah, interesting so that's uh, jared odrick who of course we're delighted to have on board coming from a completely different discipline i had a quick chat with him yesterday about that and he goes I, I guess i can't get my head around this he said i'm so used to working uh, and my body was my my sort of tool if you will as a footballer he said but now i'm in this piece of metal and i've got to i've got to sort of get it to where it needs to be i said yeah but once you get the two to gel i said and you get the same feel 
as you do as a professional athlete, you will have in some ways advantages because you know, um, you know what it takes to stay fit. You also know what it takes mentally uh, to, to you know, physically get where you need to be. And once you work that out with a car, um, then you're in good shape. He's also a filmmaker. He's a really interesting guy. Really? Yeah, he wow. was in a film with uh, Sylvester Stallone uh, last okay, year. Cool. Yeah. I didn't know that. Yeah, so look him up, Odrick. Uh, now, Tommy Sheehan's oh, Tommy also Sheehan parked also out. Star. What's happened to Tommy? Uh, again, it doesn't look as though he's going anywhere quick. That looks like, man, it's so hard to tell, but that looks like the exit of the Cube 3 turn It does, seven. doesn't it? It yeah. looks like turn 8, like the one right after yep. that. And not, not far from where Andretti came together with an Yeah. Yeah. So I don't, I also don't know how he'd be stopped there. I wonder if he maybe had a mechanical issue and pulled the car over to that spot himself. Well, he came um, back out of the pits when he was under, under caution, and so he had a little bit of time out on track before we got restarted, but we're only a few laps after that. And uh, Tommy Sheehan, our pro uh, am entry, uh, is parked up as the race continues, but under caution. So we're under caution here at Sebring, the start of a brand new season. Evan Slater alongside me and looking to get back in Trans Am, the young 18-year-old who was fifth here last year. So uh, keep an eye on uh, his progress and let's hope he gets back in the seat of a Trans Am car. Looks as though he's going to be doing a bit of radicals, which is not a bad idea either. But we're under caution right now. Two cars off, one of them uh, the, old, the old man in some ways, in Tommy Sheehan and Odrick, the new man to the sport. We'll take a short break. We'll be right back. Three for SVRA action? Well, the best way to enjoy classic auto racing is with a delicious classic from Mission Foods. Green flag your race-watching snacks with Mission's mouth-watering race day recipes. Try some of our tasty tacos, piled high nachos, fresh chips with guac, and more. So gear up your ride and fuel up those stomachs with delicious Mission Foods. Now that's too fast, too tasty. The Road Atlanta Speed Tour returns to Michelin Raceway, Road Atlanta, March 22nd through the 24th. Featuring the Trans Am Series presented by Pirelli, the Sports Car Vintage Racing Association, International GT, Prototype Sprint Series Association, and the Formula Regional Promotion. Saturday, you can take part in the Haggerty Cars and Caffeine Car Show. You do not want to miss the Road Atlanta Speed Tour. Children 12 and under are free. For tickets, simply go to speedtour.net. We're here at Sebring. Welcome back, and our coverage continues here on the Sebring Speed Tour live from Sebring International Raceway, home, of course, for 12 hours. And over the years, this former airfield, well, it's still an airfield, to be fair. Uh, they still use it, but uh, not this part of it. Uh, but it was uh, during the Second World War, an airfield used. There's Kale Phillips, I think, being thrown in on the tugger. So that's interesting. He must have had a mechanical issue. The car body looked fine, so... Um, it just must have been a mechanical for the car to break down. Yeah, sounds like it. Well, we're under caution, and again, it changes the face of this race. Connor Zilic has done all the hard work twice now, uh, and he's going to kind of do it again now because he's leading this race, and he's had Rafa Matos uh, in various seconds behind him from five down to two, and now it's going to be nothing again. Uh, we're going to do another lap under caution, so uh, we'll just have to wait until things get going again. And we're delighted to welcome back our television partner in MAV TV this year. And don't forget, uh, Thursday nights is your Trans Am nights. What else could you be doing on a Thursday night? There's no point in going out. There's no point in watching any other television station except MAV TV because you can get the highlights of everything you need. Let's head down to Pit Lane. He's with Nitro Motorsports and Joe Claridge. That was a dress rehearsal. Thank you. I'm down here at Nitro Motorsports all the way down to the end of the pit wall, which is an honor you get when you win a championship with the Cube 3 TA2 Series. But I'm with Joe Claridge. Joe, as far as I can see right now, you've got Rafa in second, Tyler Gonzalez in third, and then Thomas Anunziata in sixth right now. It looks like you guys are doing pretty good. What are your drivers saying? 
Drivers aren't saying a whole lot, obviously. The cars are all running really, really well. Rafa's new to the team, bringing a lot. Unfortunately, we don't have Brent this weekend because he's not feeling well. Tyler's doing an amazing job filling in for him. Um, and then, you know, we got a little bit behind with Thomas, you know, and, of course, he's doing a great job. Our goal is to finish one, two, three, but for some reason the seven keeps messing that up. But just keep trying, you know. Um, Everybody here is doing an awesome job. For as many cars as we have, this weekend's been really good. So you're somewhat of a new team to the Cube 3 Architecture TA2 Series. Just a few seasons. You won a championship last year, but I love the combination. You're doing so much driver development. Brad Keselowski's brother's up here talking to Thomas Annunziata. But then you bring in a two-time champion season veteran like Rafa Matos. That's got to be invaluable to these young drivers. It's very invaluable. And what was even more invaluable was how excited he was to be here and how much the guys were excited to have him here. Um, he's kind of fallen right in and almost like he's been here all along, just like with, with, with Brent, you know, and um, really enjoyed it. Really. Enjoyed it. How can you not enjoy it? Nitro Motorsports, not only are they a fantastic crew, but these guys bring the party to the Cube 3 Architecture TA2 Series. Jonathan, back to you. Thanks, Ben. Yeah, I do think it's going to be a really good combination. Rafa's a real giver. He's a really easygoing, laid-back Brazilian like so many of them are. Uh, and, you know, I've worked with the likes of Roberto Moreno in our Formula Regional Series. Uh, again, another great uh, ex-Formula 1 driver from Brazil, but um, you know, they're just great guys to, to listen to because they're very gentle and yet they understand the sport of motor racing backwards and so it's easy to learn from them. They're not aggressive, they don't push, they're not pushy you know, you kind of want to hang out with them. <laughs> yeah, for sure. I mean, I love spending any any time with Rafa that I can. I mean, he's, just, he's a funny guy, too. I mean, he's so knowledgeable but then he can also crack a good joke and he's just a, a great guy to be around. So, he's obviously doing great in this race and uh, yeah. I remember when he was doing November mustache time and he looked like uh, Freddie Mercury. We were laughing. <laughs> yeah. Good boy. Well, we're under caution here, and these are the positions after 18 laps. Zilich, Matos, and Gonzalez. Merrill and Green, your top five. Uh, we've had no real change at the front, to be honest. Merrill is about the only one that's uh, made a big difference. He's moved from seventh to fourth. Green dropping down to fifth. Uh, and so we're waiting, really, for the pin to drop a little bit on this race, and hopefully... Uh, Things will rock on, as it were, because we want an exciting finish. Zilich, though, wants the complete opposite. He wants to build a five-second lead, as he has done uh, earlier in the day, uh, and march on to what would be another stunning victory for him. But it's been a battle between Mustang and Camaro, and between Silverhair and Nitro Motorsports as well. And that's also good if we look at the ASIO data for Barry Bowe's car. Barry changing teams this year, looking for... Well, he, but in his own words, he basically said, look, I've had some good top tens. I had a podium at Detroit. Um, I kind of just want to move on. I want to I want to get better and I I want to have better results and I want to go to the next level. Um, he was the Hoosier Super Tour and 21 uh, World League, uh, World Racing League National Champion. And, uh, you know, I think he just wants to just improve a little bit more. So we're still under caution. Let's head down to Ben Sissel once again. Thanks, Jonathan. So let me explain a little bit. You see the cars here. Tony, if you can get them in the shot, I think Ty Young's coming in. But the lap traffic comes through pit lane and goes to the back to not disrupt anything that's happening out on the track. Great rule that the Cube the Architecture DA2 series kind of ran into this series. All of the drivers like it. None, none of the lap traffic cars want to get stuck in something uh, from really cool. going to you. Well, we got the gist of that. Sorry, a little bit of break up there, but no problem. And, uh, yeah, ba ba Ben just explaining how we do the rules here. It's a clever way by the race director to control the race. So what we do is if traffic is in the way of the race itself, if, in other words, when the caution comes out, what you want is an ordered situation where there's that are racing from the front to the back can race each other in the positions they're racing. So what we tend to do is if they are out of position, we roll them through the pit lane and, and sort of file them back into position that way uh, as Ty Young gets a lot of uh, duct tape to the front of that car. In the, the razor tape treatment, so he clearly had a little bit of contact with some driver, but I mean, that's just all cosmetic damage. So they just got to put the tape down so it doesn't like flap away and his hood doesn't end up flying off. 
So yeah, that racer tape, you you end up using it a lot. It's very it's very useful. Obviously, it's it's duct tape, but we call it racer tape to make it seem a little bit more official. <laughs> Would I be right in saying that with the cautions that we've had right now, and I know that one of the, the, the one of the great managers of tires is Rafa Matos and is Connor Zillage, that both of them will be thinking, look, all gloves are off now because we've had time to cool these tires down. We haven't run them at pace for several laps in the three courses we've had. Now there should be enough grip to take them to the end. Yeah, I mean, I think we have, what is it, eight laps to go, 25 minutes to go. So at this point, these tires, they haven't been put through too much work. There hasn't been a super long stint. Probably like 10 laps was the biggest stint. So the tires never got overheated. They obviously got up to temperature, but they never got too hot. Um, so then that means the tires are still in a good window. And with the amount of time we have left, you're able to just go out there and go 100% the whole time because you know that you'll be able to finish the race. Even if, even if there's no more cautions, you'll still be able to finish strong because at this stage of the race, your tires are in a great position because you haven't been working them too hard. And, uh, yeah. Well, don't forget, we've mentioned uh, Nitro. We've mentioned Silverhead. Don't forget Coke cars, 20 entries, and led by, of course, Thomas Merrill in the number 26, and he too with the HP Tuners Coke race cars looking for a podium out of this weekend. And I think Thomas Merrill's the kind of guy that also would benefit nicely from a, a position change here from fourth at the moment at this restart. As you can see on the little Janetta in front there, Zilich in the gray and blue right behind him dives in to the Mission Food Sunset Corner. And as soon as that car comes out of the way, Zilich will be in control and will lead them across the strip to restart this one. You heard from Evan Slater there. We've got plenty of tires underneath all of them now in terms of the cautions we've had. It should now be a sprint to the end. Green flag waves and away we go. 21 laps completed, 27 in all. Matos goes right behind Zilich. And here comes Merrill as predicted. Merrill looking for a way pass, but he can't quite do it. He stays in fourth, but that was a good move by the former champion. Yeah, Merrill tried to make a move around the outside there, which actually ended up opening up the inside for Austin Green to come in the inside. You can see right in front of Thomas Annunziato, there's oh! Austin Green. Oh, and then he gets pushed wide, so Thomas Annunziato can sneak through. Yeah, uh, and Merrill's really, lost that place too, Annunziato, yeah. Yeah, an aggressive move by Thomas Merrill, but it really didn't work out for him. And instead of gaining one position, he ended yeah. up losing two. That's just kind of, that can happen in racing. If you're trying to position your car to make an opportunity, you have to put your car in weird places, which can sometimes end up slowing you down and putting it yourself in actually a worse position for the people behind you. Nunziato getting very aggressive now. He now wants to get past Austin Green, who bounces over the curb. Down the Pancho, straight they go. Lostowski watching this all and waiting because he's got a chance of pouncing if any one of these three ahead of him makes a mistake. Merrill, though, desperate to get past after that uh, loss out to Nunziato. Meanwhile, Green holding them all up here, the four of them. And uh, as they race, so too does Rafa Matos. And in fact, Rafa's lost a place as well, too. Uh, Tyler Gonzalez, Gonzalez makes it up to second place. Great move by the youngster on the veteran two-time champion. Well, that'll make some stirring moments in the Nitro Motorsports debrief afterwards because that is a great move by the young 17-year-old. Yeah, I mean, it's a great move. And then in Trans Am, we don't really have team orders. I don't know too, too much oh, about no. what the Nitro Motorsports crew is, but I imagine in this stage of the season, they're not telling, they're not oh. telling Tyler, don't pass Rafa. Great to see that. Look at this, side-by-side -side action down the Ullman back straight they go. Over 160 miles an hour, it's side-by-side -side action. Zillage is out of the way. In second place, Gonzalez. Austin, Austin Green on the outside, Thomas Annunziata on the inside, and he's going to make that done. stick. Yep, he has made it stick, and Annunziata is through on Green. Meanwhile, lost Austin. Oh, Austin Green's trying to come back for the over-under. Oh, Green gets... Well, he'll come to the outside. He'll try and see if he can nip past down the back uh, front straight. They come. So all this racing for the like the fifth, the fifth place position is just making the top three. That they're, they're just happy because they're able to get clean laps and pull away. So this is just opening up that gap and making it harder for Thomas Annunziato and Austin Green to get further up the field. Possible switch back for Green, and he, there's just no room to do it here. Three, three, and four. It's very tight through there. And then you head underneath the bridge coming up and then down towards the hairpin, which is the obvious place for an overtake. But you've got to be really tucked in. Green's looking like he could make this move uh, down towards uh, the Q3 Turn 7 hairpin. And 
by the hotel, of course. It's just not close enough to make that move. Although I say that. Thomas Merrill down the inside. Merrill of Adrian could. Lastosky. Yep, this is Merrill on Lastosky, and this is oh. very reminiscent yeah. of what and happened to Andretti, isn't it? Yeah, wow. But this time they made it stick, and they both came out clean. But just, yeah, just a little bit of rubbing there on Asia because neither of them want to give up this, the real estate they have, so they're pushing hard. Talking of Andretti, Ooh, he's Lastosky. up to 15. Yeah, Lostasi got a bad run out of that last corner, so Caleb Bacon down the inside was able to try the move because he got a little bit of a better exit. Fun fact, Caleb Bacon is driving the same car that I drove here last year. He bought the car from my old, uh, my, Ooh, my team owner. Yeah, that's a good story. I like that. So you know that car well. Good yeah, car. I know that car. That car got fifth year last year, so <laughs> I think, I don't know where they're running, but I think they're probably running in the seventh. Yeah. So, yeah, eighth right now. For yeah, Caleb eighth Bacon. at the moment. And Caleb Bacon, another one of these young guys uh, coming up through the ranks. Great onboard shots from Lostowski, really seeing both he putting the car through his paces, but we're also watching closely on the car in front of him. Uh, which has been a great little battle. Uh, Thomas Merrill getting through, and here comes your leader, Zilic. The clock ticking down, though, as are the laps. We're going to finish 23 laps of the 27 now. Annunziata has made an aggressive start to his 24 campaign. This is good stuff by the young 19-year-old. Right now, Nitro Motorsports are in second, third, and fourth. So, like the, like Ben heard in the pit lane, they're trying to get that one, two, three, but the number seven car is still right in the way. But Connor Zilich is doing a great job right out front leading the pack. I said Anunciata is 19. He's actually 18. I don't want to put ages on him. <laughs> Austin Green, though, just 22 years of age, to 23 this year. And you have to be 24 or under to be in that Young Guns fight. Rookie of the Year last year, Austin Green, and now part, or continuing to be part of the three-dimensional services group with Doug Peterson. Rafa moving on to the Nitro Motorsports team, and here he is in the 16th Nitro Motorsports car, but overtaken by his teammate, the youngster. And he'll really would love to get back and uh, get past it because this is a race, race that Rafa loves to win. Yeah, I mean, Rafa was pushing hard there. You can see coming out of that turn, the Q3 turn seven, you could see he was really lighting up the rear tires, getting a lot of wheel spin. So that shows that these rear tires are falling off. And the problem is once you get that wheel spin once, you get the surface temps really high and it's really easy to do it again. And then the tires just start falling off really quickly. So I worry that uh, Rafa Matos is already in that stage where he's starting to lose the rear tires. Um, and that could be why uh, Taylor Gonzalez was able to get by him because maybe his, his, uh, his rear tires are starting to fall off and therefore his pace is falling off. Yep, Franklin Road Apparel, of course, the sponsor of Gonzalez and continues to be a big part of this championship. Ken Waits will join me in commentary, the man who runs that outfit, uh, Franklin Road Apparel, in uh, Nashville, Tennessee. And uh, great to have him as part and uh, owner now with uh, Tommy Dreesey on that team. But this has been an immaculate performance by Conor Zilic. It may not be the most exciting race uh, for him at the front, but he's just controlled it, hasn't he? Yeah, I mean, he's just controlled it. He's just done what he wants the whole time. What he wants is just to drive, not at quite 100%, but just drive at 98% this whole time. And he's proven that his his 98%, not pushing the car over its limits, but just still driving it really hard for a consistent race pace. He's proven that that works well and his car can take it. And um, he has the pace when doing that. So really great controlling from him, just, just showing everybody what he has and just using the pace that he has. You know, interestingly enough, Thomas Annunziata uh, in fourth place just did his fastest personal lap uh, at 207.45, but Zilic is even quicker than that at 207.2, so that's what we mean by controlling the race. Even though fastest laps are being put in, he's actually quicker than the entire field right now, even at this stage of 24 of the 27 gone. High above then, looking at getting a little bit crowded going into three there in the mid-pack. Zilic on his way in the gap, 1.6 seconds. Silver hair, what a great story. And Morris Hall and his team. Morris might be doing some racing later in the year. But uh, once again, with Connor Mosak and Connor Zilic, uh, he's got uh, a pretty impressive group behind him. Interestingly enough, Connor Mosak, who started what in fourth, fourth position, is down in 12. And like you say, we're really not sure what the deal is as to why Connor, because we would expect him at the sharp end. Uh, yeah, but we're, down we're, at 12. When we were talking from the engineer with Silverhair, Ben was talking to them, 
Um, you were saying the car's a little bit loose. So that uh, means, what that means is the car is sliding around. The rear end of the car wants to kind of drift through all the corners. And obviously, drift cars are cool, but drifting is not fast around a racetrack. So, no. so that's what he's struggling with. He can't put the power down. He can't really corner the car that well because the rear end just wants to slide and spin out. So he has to be really careful, and he's losing pace due to that. Um, so that's unfortunate for him, but that, I mean that happens when you add when you add all the fuel to the back of these cars. We've been running them in qualifying trim. We just qualified was the session before, so you have like no fuel, very lightweight, new tires. But when you add that 150 pounds of fuel to the back end of the car, it can make them drive in definitely different ways. So I think just adding that fuel obviously made his rear end step out a lot, and um, it gave him an unfor unfortunate symptom, I guess, of the car being loose. Well, he's down in 12. He's got Bose behind him. Andretti's up to 14th. He's trying to chase them both of them down. As going through shot is Adrian Lostowski in the all-new colors. It's hard not used to seeing him in the, in the fast auto red and white and black. But uh, we'll get used to it. Meanwhile, CB Motorsports, Caleb Bacon, Caleb Bacon nicely there. done. On Ben Mayer. Ben Mayer was in a tussle early on in the race, hit the grass. And another one of the youngsters on his way up, Ben Mayer, and his brother also races, even younger. And uh, so we might be seeing a couple of those boys coming through, as well as Ben now in his, what, third season or second season, full season? This is his, he did his first full season last year, so this That's is right. his second full season yep. that he's starting right now. Yeah, big season for him, no question. DOE Marine. Yeah. Ford Mustang. Yeah, yeah. DOE Marine. There it is. So pushing away. And back on board with Lostowski. The clock ticking down. 25 with the 27 gone. And at the moment, it's a full control here for Connor Zilic. He started pole and he's never looked back. And he's had extensions off that lead throughout this race. Uh, but never really looked in ch uh, to be challenged. Gonzalez got ahead of Matos at the restart last time and uh, now has a deficit of, what, 1.9 seconds as this battle will rage on. Yeah, Ben Mayer got passed, but he's not giving it up. He's really pushing Caleb Bacon to his limits, and he's trying to get that place back. Yeah, this is for top eight, remember? Yeah, and two laps to go, so they're using everything they have. He's really trying to get that place. Here they come. Past the Bennett's Bridge Hall, Bishop's Bend, and into 16, 15 and 16. That sector's so fun to drive. Through that through that high-speed Bennett Bridge Hall, Bishop's Bend, um, you're going like 140 miles an hour flat out, and then you're hard into a braking zone. It's just it's so smooth. This track is known to be super bumpy, but that one sector is really smooth, and it's just it's fun to drive. Let's see if uh, Ben Mayer peeks his nose out into turn 17. No, he's, uh, he's going to wait. Possible turn three, possible the hairpin, but uh, time running out, and uh, if he doesn't make it, somebody else might, because Boris said Junior's just there too, just behind. And of course, he got Boris a really Junior, good run hardly turn mentioned him. Yeah, he did, didn't he? So I wonder if he's going to peek his nose on the inside into turn one. Boris said got a good run. He's going to the outside. It's all on. Caleb, Caleb Bacon, Bacon under defending. big freeze. There's a slight mistake by the CB number 18. Oh, yeah, went a little bit wide open Didn't door he? right for Caleb Bacon, or uh, for Ben Mayer. Right? Yeah, he got a little wiggle on as though he was losing grip. And he also and opened then, the door for Boris oh, Ed Jr. Boris Ed Jr., that was beautifully done. Oh, that was a trick off the old man's uh, hat. Uh, that was a, a Boris Ed maneuver there by Jr., nicely done. Yeah, so Caleb Bacon just lost a little bit of momentum there because he went too late on the brakes into turn one, so then he ran wide, couldn't get the power down. So then on that short shoot into turn three, he just didn't have the, the speed. So then Morris said Junior got a good exit, could just pull out and do a really easy overtake. So Chevrolet versus Mustang, and I wonder if uh, 75. Oh, Ben Mayer went a little wide in the Q3 oh, architecture. Come on, Boris. Careful. Yep, very wide, and uh, just lost a little bit of momentum. That's all it takes, isn't it, really? Back on board with Lostowski. It's been yeah, and a smooth this, race for him. At this stage in the race, these cars get hot on the inside. It's like 160 degrees in the inside of these cars. So when you're sitting in there for close to an hour, it gets it's really it's really hot, it's sweaty, you're mentally tired. So it's really easy to make these mistakes. And especially when your tires are starting to fall off, you have no grip, so the car's starting to slide around, starting to move around in ways you don't want. So you're still an hour into driving these cars, so it's really easy to make a little mistake. So Ben Mayer did, but luckily it wasn't too consequential for him. Does feel that way. Uh, Zilic is extending that lead now to just over two seconds. Gonzalez will consolidate second place. Matos still third. Uh, and that's a Chevrolet Ford Ford uh, for the podium. But here comes Connor Zilic waiting 
for the white flag, and he'll see it this time round in front of our commentary booth. There it is, and Zilic starts his last lap here. The battle is still on for third place. Uh, no question, Matos is close enough to make a lunge, but uh, I don't think, given it's his teammate, he will. And Anciata has got a solid fourth place. Green in fifth. Merrill still six. Lostowski just a little bit further behind. But the battle on between Bacon, Mayer, and Boris said in seventh, eighth, ninth position. Mosak eleventh. And Reddy's up to twelfth now. Both of them have got past Barry Bowes. Josh Shirley yeah. drops to fifteenth. Yeah, it sucks what happened to Adam Andretti. That really, that racing incident is really unfortunate for him. But he's had a great recovery. I think he was as low as 18th, and now he's got up to 12. He was down um, in 22nd after the incident. Oh, really? Was yeah. He? Wow. Yeah. So that's a great recovery. Wow. What can you say? Uh, we both watched in absolute admiration uh, Connor Zilic a couple of times last year, uh, and we couldn't. Uh, the platitudes we were giving him. I mean, he. You know, I kept saying it. He was 17 now, probably 18 or about to turn 18. Um, but he could do no wrong, and it seemed that even when penalties were thrown at him, um, you know, where he had to potentially come through the field, um, he was able to rise above it and also psychologically not be affected. There was one, I think, at Detroit where he had a hole uh, and had to start right at the back, not getting out in time, and uh, he came all the way through. Yeah, I mean, he's proven that he's a great driver, and that silver hair team has also proven that they can put together yeah. a good car. So, I mean, that combination is just... I mean, it's proven that in Trans Am right now, that's the combination you need to win. And I think he's won, like, so many races, obviously, last year, starting this year, in a great way. Um, so they've proven, he's proven that he's a great driver. And it just, it shows. Yeah, no question. Just the long Ullman straight to go then for the youngster, Connor Zillage and the Silver Hair Racing Team, the Chevrolet Camaro, coming into view now through the heat haze. Down the back straight towards the Mission Food Sunset. And it's been a pretty immaculate performance by the number seven. He won more races than anybody last year, but Cruz pipped him. And look at that, sliding around the last corner, but in full control to take the checkered flag here. Connor Zilic wins the first race of 2024 for the Cube 3 Architecture TA2 Series. Second place goes to Tyler Gonzalez, and that's a huge scalp in beating the two-time champion and teammate Rafa Matos for third and Seattle takes fourth, Green fifth, uh, Thomas Merrill takes sixth, Lostowski seventh, Ben Mayer holds on for eighth position ahead of Boris said Jr. ninth, Caleb Bacon now crosses the line in tenth position. Connor Mosak is in twelfth, Andretti does complete the race in twelfth position, Bose is thirteenth, and Hurley Mock, Michelle, the new, the new boy in sixteenth position, Rogers, Barker, Sabato, Procher. But uh, Evan, thank you very much for coming and joining me. Yeah, well, thank you for having me. It was a lot of fun. Yeah, good. And we want you back in the seat as soon as we can. But good luck with the Radicals. That's going to be a lot of fun. But while we cool down for a minute, we'll pause and just uh, contemplate what was a brilliant race for Connor Zillage. Given the amount of safety that was involved in that safety car time involved, and therefore the field uh, crunching up again, and he having to build on that lead every time, uh, it's pretty impressive. Oh, well done, that famous number seven. And he's going to be the track house this season as well, learning his way as he makes his way up the ladder. And uh, Justin Marks, who of course spends a lot of time here in uh, Trans Am himself. And, could well have been a runner for the championship at TA last year had he not got his NASCAR uh, job <laughs> running a team of Daniel Suarez and Ross Chastain. But it's going to be an interesting year for Connor Zillich. And uh, if there's a, a young kid you want to watch over the next four or five years, that, that, that's a name to remember, isn't it? So Connor will bring it back into pit lane. A little like drift around that corner. He I was know. just turning in Florida, just let the let the thing slide. Yeah, so that, that was, was cool. That was fun, and you could tell he was having fun. Just that he's like, I'll let it slide. Yeah, I mean he's got the car control, so why not? Why not win the race and just let it slide around the last corner? Great start to the year, perhaps not the most enthralling wheel-to-wheel -wheel race we've had in Trans Am, but still very accomplished by Conor Zillich. Let's head down to Ben Sissel, down in the pre-pit lane. 
Well, here we are down at the winner's circle for the Cube 3 TA2 Architectures TA2 Series winner's circle at the Sebring Speed Tour, waiting for Connor Zillich to get out, probably elated. But man, Tyler Gonzalez, Rafa Matos, what a running from them. Just a few weeks ago, the winner of the 24 Hours of Daytona, unbelievable, ladies and gentlemen, Silver Hair Racing, Connor Zillich. That has got to feel really good. Connor, we. Connor, come back to me. I'm coming, I'm coming, I'm coming. He's got to say hi to his team because what a great start to the series. Competitors coming over congratulating you. This has got to feel really good. It seemed like you just were the class of the field the whole race. Yeah, my uh, my Silver Hair crew, it's it's a pleasure to race for these guys every time I come back to this series. and. Um, you know, I'm just so grateful for all their work. And Maurice and Laura Hole, they've, uh, you know, the team that they've built and how far we've come in the last two or three seasons is, uh, it's really cool. So, um, you know, I'm just glad to be a part of this team and, um, you know, thankful for all the opportunities, Chevrolet for supporting me and, um, you know, all my family, my dad for, for coming out here and, and making this all possible. My mom back at home, I'm sure she's watching. So, um, you know, there's so many people that, that make this happen. And, um, you know, I'm just beyond grateful to be in this position. Connor Zillish, unbelievable silver hair racing. I got to come over here though and talk to Tyler Gonzalez. Unbelievable, man. In somebody else's car, uh, made a great pass on your teammate Rafa. First time ever at Sebring. Just unbelievable outing. Yeah, I mean, I just can't thank Nitro Motorsports enough. They gave me a great car and uh, I was able to come out here and perform for myself and for them. Uh, I had a good little battle at the end with Rafa. It was sadly the only passing I got to do, but Connor drove a great race. I can't thank uh, Trans Am and Mav TV, Nitro Motorsports, Toyota. I, all these guys helped me so much, and I'm just glad to be here. Yeah, the, the Franklin Road Apparel Company, Nitro Motorsports car, given to you by your friend Brent Cruz. You, anything you want to say to Brent? I'm sure you're watching, Brent. Yeah, unfortunately he was sick and couldn't make it. I would have loved to have another teammate out here, but thanks for the car. It's really fast, that's for sure. Thanks for the help, and uh, glad I could do, it, do a good job for you guys. Nice. Well, let's come over here to Rafa. Rafa has been on the podium here at Sebring many times. What a great start for your championship run, your third championship run in the TA2 Series. How you feeling? Yeah, not bad at all for the first race. We, we had to make sure we finished the race, right? So it's a long championship. It's uh, it's uh, we gotta score points. If we win uh, one of those races, just a big bonus for us. So we we had a, a pretty good battle, myself and my and my teammate Tyler, Tyler Gonzalez. You know, I think we, our car was a little bit too free towards the end, so I couldn't couldn't really hold him, and uh, we just had nothing for for Connor uh, today. You know, it was a, a third place day for us, and I'm glad we finished. Heads off to the Nitro Motorsports team, building eight very fast race cars and. You know, um, a shout to Chris Dyson, you know, allowing us to compete at the highest level. You know, uh, we have the Concord American Flag Pole Company as the primary sponsor of the car, so we're very proud to be carrying their, their logo on our car. Super happy with the P PME engines and the, ch the Cope chassis. So we, we had a good car today, just uh, we missed a little bit for, for that P1, but looking forward for the re rest of the championship. Nice. Thank you very much, Rafa. Then we had Thomas Annunziata there, Barry Bowes, unbelievable. But Jonathan, back to you. Thanks, Ben. Yeah, interesting Keep words. Allowed, from we like that. Rafa Matos, and of course, that stable of uh, Nitro, some eight drivers in all. But it's Silver Hair who gains the first victory of the year with Connor Silic. Nitro takes second, third, and fourth with Gonzalez, Matos, and Annunziata. It's going to be a real battle. Three dimensional services are far from out of it. Austin Green is going to fly the flag for them. Doug Peterson sadly retiring. Merrill takes six for the HP Tuners Cope race cars, the first of the Cope cars to come in in sixth place. Lostowski in seventh, Ben Mayer eighth, Boris Said Jr. in ninth for Silver Hair, and Caleb Bacon rounding out the top ten. Eleventh, Connor Mosak, Adam Andretti got back up from 22nd to 12th. Bose early, Mock 
Bushell, Rogers, Barker, Sabato and Keith Procher rounding out the top 20. Further down, it was a big field of over 39 cars. Durbin, Gallagher, Winston, Gray, DeLong, Paul, and as you can see, they are a few laps down. Bruce Raymond coming in to the pits, and likewise, Rogerio and several others. Odric ending up at the exit of one. Philip Sheehan, Ellis, Saunders, Caton, Rumberg, and Peterson not finishing race one of the Cube 3 architecture, TA2 series. So... Some great races to come. We'll be going all over the States and also we're going to Canada for the first time this year. Looking forward to that as we go bigger and better. Let's take a look at some of the highlights then of our first race from Sebring. And at the start, it was a perfect start for Connor Zillich. Not so for Ben Mayer. He went onto the grass track under the bridge there, but luckily Lostowski took advantage of it. Sheahan came in, off came the lid and a quick look. And likewise, Peterson had Gremlins as well and retired. Another restart after that, and we got a few turnarounds. Keith Procheck involved in that, and we saw it from Tommy Sheerhan's view. And Unciata bumming and uh, banging and bashing with Adam Andretti, and sadly, Andretti losing out in that battle. There was no losing out, though, for this man, Connor Zilic. He just rolled on, and it didn't matter how many cautions we threw at him. There was no stopping Connor Zilic. He takes the first win of 2024. And a quick thanks to Evan Slater joining me here in the booth. Uh, anything else besides the obvious uh, that you picked up from the racing today? Yeah, I mean, I think it was a great race. I think you showed, everybody showed, like, where they think they can be in the championship. I mean, Rafa, um, Tyler Gonzalez, I don't know how many races Tyler Gonzalez is going to do, but Rafa and Thomas and Nunziata, they really showed that they're in it for the championship. Connor Zillich obviously always shows that he's a great driver, but he can't do the whole championship, so he's not going to be a threat for that. But, um, yeah, I mean, you really got those guys to show that they are fast and they're here to win. Now, as I said, we have been live on MAV TV. But if you uh, missed all the action and you want to see a full night's action of highlights, then join us for the Q3 Architecture TA2 series. And that starts on Thursday night at 8 p.m. Eastern. And that's followed immediately by, at 9 p.m. Eastern, the TA, XGT, SGT, and GT. So Thursday nights is your Trans Am night. T for Trans Am and Thursday nights. You don't want to do anything else but watch MAV TV. Join us for all those highlights. been a beautiful start to the season here they did some testing here last week and so everybody pretty dialed in when it comes to racing and testing and practicing here at Sebring and as you can see we've got a nice little car procession and that's uh, there's a whole event going on it's not just Trans Am remember we've got SVRA here hundreds of cars from there and then there's these on these uh, coffee coffee and caffeine and cars and processions and oh, it's all good stuff Plenty, plenty to see and do here at Sebring. Is there uh, is at every Speed Tour event, and we will be going around the United States and Canada this year. So we'll be coming to somewhere near you at some point. So look up, whether it be Watkins Glen, whether it be Road Atlanta, or even on the West Coast, we will be coming to a place near you fairly soon. And if you want to stay with our live stream, we'll be covering some SVRA action. We've got group coverage from several races including international gt now part of the uh, perella family and we're delighted to have them on board nice little t-bird there going through shot on the corvette the mustangs it's always great to get out on track even if it's just at a slow pace like this a to let the fans see these exotic cars but also a chance to drive around the famous sebring circuit not an often you get a chance to do that yeah, and when you're driving on this track, you can really see how bumpy it is. Like, <laughs> I'll bet. I was, on the, uh, I was on the track walk on a little motorcycle, and you can just see, man, there's some big holes, there's some big bumps. I mean, it's just like it's driving in a parking lot, basically. Not really. I mean, it's, not, it's a fancy parking lot, but there's a lot of bumps. It feels like there's speed bumps going into turn one. So, yeah, um, yeah it's really fun around here. And the you, amazing you thing really is no one it. complains. It's uh, Anywhere else, people would complain, but uh, I love it. Uh, well, let's head down now to... Our podium celebrations, Ben Sissel, obviously our master of ceremonies, as he always is. Let's head down and hear from the top men in Trans Am TA2. All right, thank you, Jonathan. Come on, crowd, get loud. The Cube 3 Architecture TA2 Series. Ooh, I'm liking this crowd. I love it. 
We are going to start with the TA2 Pro-Am. In third place, this was his 99th start in this, se in this series. Michelin Raceway Road Atlanta will be his 100th. Let's hear it all the way from Chicago HP Tuners, Keith Prochuk. Nice. Keep it up, crowd. I'm liking this. Don't let me get in your way. Keith Prochuk, Nick Middleton giving that trophy. In second place, Pro-Am, the number 61, Roberto Sabato. Ladies and gentlemen, come on out. What's that? And then, ladies and gentlemen, this is pretty cool. He ran the whole series here with us last year. He's running Pro-Am Championship in the National Series. He's running the whole Western Championship. So he's going to be with us on the West Coast Thunder Hill next weekend. Accio Data, let's hear it. Barry Bowes, M1 Race Cars here at the Jim Weed Winner Circle. So cool. So Keith Prochuk, man, since I started with the TA2 Series, you've been right there running the Pro-Am representing your company, HP Tuners, this has to feel good. Oh, it feels great to be up here. It was a real fun race. The Pro-Am series is a really nice addition to uh, Trans Am. You know, I was talking to the guys. Uh, we're out there in the middle of the pack, but, you know, the whole race, we're digging, and it feels great. Um, happy to be up here. Nice. Keith Prochuk, ladies and gentlemen. Roberto, you've had some bad luck here at Sebring in the past. You're on the steps, man. This has got to feel good. This feels incredible, hard to believe. I got to thank my team for working all night last night to get my car ready. Thank you guys. And this field is tough. That's all I could say. Tough. Nice. This field is tough. Any Harry Potter fans out there? Harry Potter fans? No? Yes? Well, anyway, Accio Data, named after Harry Potter for Bring Me the Data. Barry Bose, you've been in the, in the paddock with us for many, many years, many seasons, always doing really well. This has to feel good. Oh, this feels absolutely incredible. It's, it's, it's amazing that I'm here today. Yeah, Osseo is to summon, uh, summon a victory uh, today, and uh, it feels fantastic. Um, you know, Keith and I often qualify near each other. Keith races really well, and I figured I'd be following up to the front uh, as, you know, as much as I could. And when he got hung up uh, at the initial start, it gave me the opportunity to get up here, and it feels fantastic. Nice. And sorry I said it wrong. Osseo data. Let's hear it, ladies and gentlemen. Keith Prochuk. Roberto Sabato, Barry Bowes. That is our Trans Am Cube 3 Architecture TA2 Series Pro-Am. We've got some hats. You guys are welcome to throw those hats out to the crowd if you want. Pro check, let's see what kind of arm you got. Roberto, there we go. Who wants a hat? Nice, nice. Come on now. Ooh, that was a good grab right there. Come on, Sebring. Get loud. Keith Prochuk, Roberto Sabato, and Barry Bowes. Let's see what they've got. Are they going to be gentlemen? Oh, oh, and then Barry goes right into the eyes. Unbelievable. Well, I don't know how you guys are going to wash that suit in a week, so hopefully you can, you can get on that. Barry, congratulations, man. Great start to the season. Keith Procho, yeah, exactly. I'll see you in a couple days, actually, in San Francisco or near San Francisco. And Roberto, nice job. All right, guys. Florida. Come on in here, people. You can come on in here. I need you guys to get super loud because the Cube 3 TA2 Series two-time champion switching teams this season. Let's hear it all the way from Florida, but started his career in Brazil, Rafa Matos, ladies and gentlemen. But now he is living in the beautiful state of Florida. Two, sorry, man. Two-time champion, Rafa Matos. We got some Rafa Matos fans. There we go. Look at this. So, your new home of Florida loves you, Rafa. So here we go in second place. He's only done one other race with us last year at Coda. He's in last year's championship-winning car of Brent Cruz. But let's hear it. Tyler Gonzalez with Nitro Motorsports. Chris, I'm trying to stay out of your way. Tell me if I'm not. And then in first place, what a great start 
just a few weeks ago won the 24-hour Rolex race at Daytona in an LMP. And now here he is, Silver Hair Racing, Connor Zilich. I believe, Connor, you're still 17, 17 years old, Connor Zilich, is that correct? Nice, 17 years old. All right, here we go. So, a few years ago, we started this Young Guns competition in the Cube 3 TA2 series. And uh, we have the seasoned veterans like Rafa Matos, Thomas Merrill, who are here. But now, Rafa, every year, the TA2 field gets thicker and thicker with talent, making it harder and harder for you veterans. How you feeling now, starting out third? That's got to be good for the championship. Yeah, I feel really good. I think we, we had a great day overall, you know. This is a champ uh, championship points. we got to keep finishing races. If, if we win one of those races, it's just a big bonus for us. Um, hats off to the Nitro Boys, you know, building eight very fast race car, very fast race cars and putting six of, out of th those cars in the top ten. So it's a great achievement for, for every single member of the team. I'm very proud of them. Good job by Tyler. Congratulations, Connor. Hats off to Chris Dyson also allowing us to compete at the highest level with the Concord American Flag Pole Company. It's our primary sponsor, so super happy about that, to be able to deliver a good result right away. Uh, PME engines gi giving us great power, and obviously the Mike Cope chassis, you know, give, giving us a, a really good handling, handling car. It's, it's a good day for us. We missed a little bit, but we'll, we'll be ready for Road Atlanta. And this is now your home state of Florida, correct? Yeah, I live two and a half hours from here, and uh, I have a, as you can see, I have a lots of friends, and and they all came over to 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 cheer for me. I, I appreciate. I love you guys. Thank you very much, and. Hopefully we'll, we'll climb a couple more steps next year and, and, and win one more here in Sebring. Nice, I love it. Rafa Matos, come on now. Tyler Gonzalez, uh, first, what is your road, or your road racing history? What's your experience at Sebring? Uh, Sebring's my home track. I raced here a lot. Uh, we won the GR Cup championship here last year. We wrapped it up. Uh, I've got a bunch of races here. Just really happy I could come here in a TA2 car. It's been my dream, honestly. These cars are amazing. They're super fun. Uh, glad we could come off and with a second place. I think it's a good result for our second start ever. Can't thank Nitro Motorsports enough. My great teammates, Rafa, uh, Connor, congratulations to him and just all the crew guys that helped me out today. Nice. I love it. Let's hear it. Tyler Gonzalez. Nick Tucker, you got to feel pretty good. You had a fourth. Uh, third and a second right not bad not bad and eighth nice up oh, jimmy live corrected me i love it. i love being heckled by jimmy live all right connor zillich you got to feel really good what a month it's been for you how was it out there yeah it was uh probably a lot harder than it may have looked on tv but um you know i'm super thankful for everyone at silver hair racing this is a brand new how racing car that they built together and um, you know, to come out here in the first race with this car and, and get a win is, is really special to me. And I'm sure it's special to all these guys who've worked really hard on this car all off season long. So, um, you know, just super proud of this team. Unfortunately, I can't be here all year to race with them. But, um, you know, I'm, I'm confident that Connor Mozak and, and Boris Said Jr. Will, will do a good job keeping, keeping the team up front. So I'm um, just thankful to Maurice and Laura Hole for everything they've done for me and, um, you know, made this possible and, um, you know, continuing to make a lot of my racing happen. So, um, you know, to everyone, my family, my mom and dad, they... Uh, support me along the way and you know all my friends that are probably watching I, I hate that Brent couldn't be here to, to race it out with us today but um, you know glad that I'm sure he's watching from home and you know my friends at Atlanta Jesse Love and Daniel Dye they uh, both qualified on the pole yesterday so um, you know a good weekend for the friend group and you know just glad I could be here and, and get my first win of the season in the Trans Am Series. Nice I love it I love it and Justin Marks if you're watching Top step, very good. Friend of the series, Justin Marks at Trackhouse Racing. Come on now, let's hear Rafa Matos, Tyler Gonzalez, Connor Zilich. All right, who wants one of these hats? Come on now. Who wants a Sunoco hat? Let's see what these guys got on their arms. Yeah, yeah, you can throw them out. Oh, oh, right now, Tyler Gonzalez. Look, he had some pretty good hang time. I got one. Wait, 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 wait. Here we go. I got one right here. Look at that. Who wants a signed Sunoco hat from Connor Sillage? Come on now. Let's see there. <laughs> That's awesome. Come on now. Sebring International Raceway. 
Come on now, get loud. This is for this Buzz bike right here. Get loud. Rafa, Matos, Tyler, Gonzalez, Connor, Zilich. Unbelievable. Silver hair. Nice job, you guys. Unbelievable show. So a uh, few of these gentlemen are not old enough for champagne. So, yeah. <laughs> yeah, exactly. You'll get champagne. Let's hear it one more time. Come on now. Rafa Matos, Tyler Gonzalez, and Connor Zillich. There's just something kind of anticlimactic about it. We need to bring super soakers up here, though. Nice, nice. All right. Uh, where's my Rafa fans? I'm going to put Rafa on the spot. Rafa, who is this bike going to? Point him out. Describe him to me. What is, what's that? This buzz bike goes out to the most obnoxious fan here. Who's it going to? Oh, my biggest fan. I think it's that man there in the back there, Jose, the, the black guy. Jose. Come over here. Let's hear it for jo Jose. How would Jose, Jose. Come on up here. Come on. Let's hear it for him. Winning this brand new buzz bike. Come on up here, man. Man, you need a bike as slow as you walk. Oh, there we go. Now I almost heard him. So look at this. All right. So translate. What did he just say there? Is it? He's a good friend of mine from, from our church, um, um, a, man, a man of God from Brazil. And he's a, a very, very, very big fan of motorsports in general. He followed a lot of my racing back in Brazil when I, when I raced stock cars in Brazil. And just a, a, a great guy. Well, nice. This is yours. Yeah. How about that? It's like, a, it's like a showcase showdown here at The Price is Right. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Nice. Well, let's hear it, ladies and gentlemen. How cool is that? Omolagato. And then, yeah, here, I got I to gotta bring this off, though, because we're going to bring the, uh, the watch up. We'll take him down the wheelchair ramp, Eric, if you don't mind. He's going to be riding all the way to Brazil. Nice job. Yeah. Okay, nice. He's going to ride at home. Yeah, yeah. He doesn't have the trunk space, he says. That is a foldable bike, though. So our Omolagato watch, another watch for you this month. Well, let me see. Yeah. For the fastest lap, beautiful watch. Connor Zillich, come on now. Hold that up there. Connor Zillich just in the watch collecting business here lately, last couple seasons. Come on now, get loud, everybody. One last time. Let's leave this thing partying. Let's party here. Thank you guys so much. Cube 3 Architecture TA2 Series, the big machine, or I'm sorry, the Trans Amp Series, sponsored, presented by Pirelli. Thank you to all of our marketing partners and sponsors. We will be back here next year, our first race of the season. Thank you guys so much for coming out. Nick Middleton, thank you for your sponsorship, Cube 3 Architecture. Jonathan Green, I'm sending it back up to you, buddy. Great stuff, Ben. Well done. And we always like to end on a buzz. But it's time, as Omelagato would tell you, to get out of here. And we thank our partners in MAV TV as always and our new title sponsor in Cube 3 Architecture. Welcome aboard. That's our coverage of TA2. Well done to Connor Zillage and to a new name to many uh, in Gonzalez. Watch out for him. He's coming hard and fast with Nitro Motorsport. Rafa Matos will be helping him, but I don't know how much after today. Don't forget, you can see all the action on MAV TV on Thursday nights starting at 8 p.m. Eastern. Until then, from me, Jonathan Green, goodbye for now.
good is this? Look at this view from Lostowski. It brings all my fans, it brings the audience into the car with me. We turn 140 mile an hour entry speeds. The quickest and most efficient way for me to get information to my drivers is from using the VBOX HT2 system.